Well, good evening and howdy again, everyone. Yankton High School Basketball is on five-star streaming from YouTube, and Yankton High School Basketball is presented by First National Bank Omaha. FNBO with full-service banking, mortgage, ag, commercial, small business, free checking, savings, and credit cards, your great big small bank, FNBO. Doubleheader between Class A, T area, and Double A, Yankton. In our first game of the evening, it's the Yankton Gazelles 5-11, and 3-4 and four in the ESD against the T area Lady Titans, who are 10-8 and eight and 6-3 and three in the Dakota 12 Conference. In our nightcap, it's the boys game with the Yankton Bucks at 9-7, and 4-3 and three in the ESD against the T area Titans, 11-6, and 8-1 and one in the Dakota 12 Conference. They are receiving votes in Class A boys this week in the South Dakota Prep Media basketball poll. This is the Gazelle Basketball pregame show brought to you by the Yankton Medical Clinic. The Yankton Medical Clinic, so much care, so close to home. Michael, well, just a couple nights ago, Sioux Falls Christian defeated the Gazelles 67-41. to Gazelles were very competitive in the first quarter as they were leading 15 to 14, they actually had a 15 to 11 lead late in the first quarter. But Sioux Falls Christian outscored the Gazelles 20 to 5 in the second quarter and went on from there. They did, and the you know the Gazelles just couldn't uh, seem to get their bearings about them in the in the second quarter and in the second half, uh, and the game just got away from them. Uh, and so hopefully tonight they they have a little bit more back at home, a little bit firmer foundation uh senior night you know the girls are gonna be playing with some emotion uh so hopefully uh hopefully that can carry over uh you know t area should be a should be a good competition for them tonight uh kind of take them into the final games of the uh, regular season into sodak 16 all right in the latest girls double a basketball poll in the south dakota prep media basketball poll sioux falls washington back on top now with the Gorman second, Rapid City Stevens third, Brandon Valley fourth, and Rapid City Central fifth, with Huron receiving one vote. Coming up on the Gazelle Basketball pregame show, we'll tell you about T area and visit with their coach Adam Shoresman. We'll be back in one minute on Five Star Streaming from YouTube. Horizon Healthcare in Yankton offers medical, dental, and behavioral health services for all from tooth pains to aches and pains. Our new location on 920 Broadway Avenue is a comfortable, expanded space where everyone is welcome. Whether insured, uninsured, Medicaid or Medicare, here in Yankton, we care for all. And that's what we care about most. Call to schedule your appointment at Horizon Healthcare. What if there was someone to make sure they were protected? What if there was someone to help your future be clearer? What if there was someone to help during the tough news? From vision to cancer and all things in between, that someone is Nick Antrobus. The Antrobus Agency, making your benefits count for today. Back on the Gazelle Basketball pregame show, Yankton at 5 and 11. The T area Lady Titans 10 and 8. And folks, this is the first ever meeting between the Gazelles and the Lady Titans as T area opened up as a high school in 2003. T area, along with their DAC 12 schedule, has played a number of AA girls schools. Uh, they lost to Sioux Falls Jefferson 51 to 43, lost to Brandon Valley 61 to 60. Also, Defeated Aberdeen Central 53 to 46, lost to O'Gorman 64 to 34, lost to Harrisburg 51 to 49. After tonight, the Lady Titans will wrap up their season at Elk Point Jefferson. T area is coached by Adam Shoresman, who's in his fourth year, a graduate of South Dakota State. He is assisted by Scott Vindy and Alan West. And Coach Shoresman and I visited earlier today about the Lady Titans and the matchup with Yankton tonight. Coach Shoresman, thanks for joining us on the Gazelle Basketball pregame show. Well, at 10-8, and 
talk about uh, the Lady Titan season up to this point. You know, it's been kind of one that's uh, successful, but also a little uh, a little trying at times. We've had a lot of really close games. Uh, some of those even against the AA schools uh, that we looked at. We just had a close one with Harrisburg last week that uh, was a, came down to a two-point game. Uh, a lot of games that we've had to lead in the fourth quarter. And then, uh, you know, some little mental mistakes that we might not have closed those games out. So uh, it's been a really good season as far as, like, the girls are concerned. Uh, some individual accomplishments have been b- very good. But I think that looking at being an A school, going into that AA schedule, you know, it might be a little bit of uh, intimidating at times. So uh, we've hung around with a lot of teams, lost to Brandon Valley by one point. Uh, uh, Jefferson, a, a good team in, in AA, too, you know, hung with them, had the lead in the fourth quarter. So uh, a lot of, I think, a lot of battle scars going into the late into the season and hopefully into the playoffs, that really helps us know that we can compete with anybody. Talk about the gals that have been your leaders all season long. Well, so kind of our uh, do-it-all kind of girl is Katie Vestica, uh averages 19.7, uh, 19.5 uh, points per game, eight rebounds. I mean, she's she's a really good player, six foot, you know, two point guard. Uh, you know, draws a lot of attention. We've had a lot of girls that stepped up too. Uh, Brent Shupner has kind of been a a really good rock for us, a senior. And, you know, going into this year, right, she's really stepped up. Uh, hadn't started before before this year, and uh, we're getting a lot of really good minutes from her, and, and she's really kind of been the calm within the storm in a lot of games. So uh, if we need a bucket right away, she's a good uh, one to get, get into right away uh, early in the game. And then uh, if we look at Mara, Mara Grant coming off the bench, and she's a post player for us that's really, really come into her own and, and has had a really good last, like, three, four games for us. All right. Uh, well, a flurry to end the season, uh, Coach. Uh, tonight it's Yankton, and then you wrap up uh, the regular season with Elk Point Jefferson Friday uh, before Class A region play uh, coming up uh, next Tuesday. First ever meeting with the Gazelles, and uh, what have you seen from Yankton on tape? You know, I think they're a lot better team than what their record indicates, and that's what we've really preached in our practices this week is that a hey, quit looking at the stats, quit looking at the, the win-loss column, really look at what we do and, and kind of take away some of their strengths. Uh, I know that number three for you guys, she's a really good shooter. Um, is that the uh, – uh, I can never say her name. Edna. Jillian Eisnes. As, as, okay, yep. 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 Uh, she a uh, really good shooter, a really good player. I think she's kind of your guys' spark. Uh, probably your guys' leading scorer. And then you guys got some uh, pretty good post players, I think, with that uh, Salvatore girl and, uh, oh, you're number 10. So yeah, really good, I think, uh, overall, or not number 10, number 12. Uh, but that's kind of been our scout here lately is that looking at some of these other teams that you guys have been playing. Uh, I think you guys had a big win, what was it, Central? Yes. Uh, last week here, last weekend. And, you know, it's kind of the, the way that A's been going too, uh, Class A, is that, you have to be ready game in and game out. And if right. you're not, well, then, uh, you know, anyone can beat you. So I think you guys may be looking at our record, too, being like, ah, 10 and 8, not great. But, uh, you know, we, we can't just look at your guys' record either because we know that, you know, especially in that ESD, you guys are, are battling all the time. Coach Schwartzman, again, thanks for joining us on the Gazelle Basketball pregame show. All right, thanks, Joe. Adam Schwartzman, the head coach at T-Area on the Gazelle Basketball pregame show, brought to you by... The Yankton Medical Clinic, the Yankton Medical Clinic, so much care, so close to home. T area, as a team, is averaging 53 points, shooting 38% from the floor, 29% from three, and 70% from the free throw line, averaging 35 rebounds, almost 10 assists, 16 turnovers, three block shots, and nine steals per game. Katie Vasica, only a sophomore, averages 19.5 points per game, averages eight rebounds a game, has 29 threes on the season. She has been to the free throw line 121 times, a 75% free throw shooter, 41 assists, 45 steals, and 36 block shots. Bryn Shupner is averaging 10 points a game, along with five rebounds per game. She is a 75% free throw shooter, has 18 assists, 14 steals, and seven block shots. So a one-two punch for T area that the Gazelles will face tonight. Right now, let's uh, now visit with the head coach of the Yankton Gazelles, Trey Creer, who's in his eighth year, a graduate of Mount Marty University. He is assisted by Amy Long, Jill Muth, and Zach Hoover. 
Coach Creer tonight, senior night, and, uh, well, we're going to see Ellie Karlovitz on the court, uh, hopefully for just a, a couple seconds, but uh, good news as uh, her progress now toward the uh, end of the regular season is going to see her on the court hopefully next week. Yeah, and then an exciting night for our program. Anytime you, you get an opportunity to honor five seniors, five kids who uh, have stuck with the program uh, for four years uh, through through some ups and downs, some, some good years, some good experience, and then through some frustrations as well, uh, for them to have stuck out and, and had that longevity um, speaks about the things that we're doing in our program. So excited to give them an opportunity to be recognized. We're also going to recognize their parents as they've played a major role in, in the support staff and, and the support group of those kids throughout this four-year basketball career. So going to get a chance to recognize them as well. You, you talk about Ellie, and, and uh, she's going to get an opportunity to, to be on the floor at the start of the game tonight. Uh, she's, she's in the process of getting herself cleared to be able to, to compete again for us. Hopefully by next Tuesday, uh, she'll be good to go with a couple practices under her belt as well. So um, exciting for that for our group as well obviously she brings a lot of things to our team uh, on both ends of the floor um, during her time that she's been out here we feel like we've had some kids step up so only going to be better with her uh, back on the floor for us again all right t area comes in uh, tonight and uh, you know of course they play uh, in the uh, the dac 12 which has some uh, outstanding teams and they've played some double a teams uh, this year uh, but uh, a sophomore guard, a 6'2 sophomore guard that averages almost 20 points, 8 rebounds, 29 threes on the season. has been to the free throw line 121 times, has 41 assists, 45 steals, 36 block shots. Uh, I'm sure the, uh, I think T area kind of goes through Katie Vaseka. Yeah, and, and a special player that she is, and, and the, the youth that she has just is not evident in her game like you just mentioned and she's a very aggressive kid they they go to her for a lot of things uh from from bringing the ball up the floor handling the ball against the press uh distributing the ball to her teammates they run her off a lot of ball screens they they give her opportunities to attack the basket they'll post her up a little bit uh and she can shoot the three as you mentioned you know yeah. I've seen seen a few different uh, uh games of theirs and and she's just a special player, and to be as young as she is is, is even more unique. So it's going to be uh, a, a definite challenge for us. We've, we've got to find some ways to get the ball out of her hands, maybe try and keep the ball out of her hands once that happens. But we've got to guard the rest of them as well. They've got a couple other kids who can shoot the ball from the three-point line, um, and, and that's why they've had some success over the course of this year is, is they have some versatility as well. So the defensive end for us is going to be important. You know, one of the things we talked to our kids before the Sioux Falls Christian game was we had a great game last Saturday against Rapid City Central, but the reason why is because we played some defense. You know, we, we won a 38 to 36 ball game. We, we defended. We finished possessions with defensive rebounds, and, and that has to be something that we bring every night for us to have an opportunity to be competitive. Coach Creer, appreciate the visit. Go get them. Talk to you at halftime of the boys' game. You bet. Thanks, Joe. Trey Creer on the Gazelle Basketball pregame show brought to you by the Yankton Medical Clinic. So much care, so close to home. Coming into the week, the Gazelle's averaging 39 points a game, shooting 32% from the floor, 25% from three, and 54% from the free throw line, averaging 26 rebounds, 10 assists, five steals, and 14 turnovers per game. Jordan Salvatore leads the Gazelles in rebounding at 6.3 boards a game coming into the week. Kate Beeman at 4.3. Claire Tereshinsky leads the Gazelles in scoring at 9.5 points a game. Jordan Salvatore at 6.9. Leading three-point shooters, Claire Tereshinsky with 28 and 10. For Molly Savvy, as she's really come on from three lately. Leading in assist, coming into the week, Kate Beeman with 31. And coming into the week, leading the Gazelles in steals, is Claire Tereshinsky with 17. Again, it is senior night as Jordan Salvatore, Kate Beeman, Jillian Eisness, Ellie Karlovitz, and Molly Savvy will all be recognized and will start in tonight's game. We'll be back with tonight's starting lineups after this two-minute timeout here on 5 Star Streaming from YouTube.
JR's Oasis in Yankton, your one-stop store for everything you need. The parking lot, it's the biggest in town for ease of getting in and out. Oh, and the selection they have inside, it's unbeatable. Energy drinks, coffee, pop, and even something for the adults. Now the food selection, huh, they only give me 30 seconds, but there's daily specials posted right on the outside, along with burgers, ribs, and so much more. JR's Oasis, Highway 50 East, Yankton. Cornerstone Jewelry Design in Yankton's Meridian District is your local fine jewelry destination. We offer unique jewelry for every budget. Rings, earrings, necklaces, and bracelets, plus Landstrom's Black Hills Gold and our brand new selection of Seiko watches. Or we can custom design your perfect piece. We provide cleaning, inspection, and repairs. Everything you need in a jewelry store with the local values and service you love. For your milestones, count on Cornerstone. Stop and see us on 3rd Street or visit cornerstonejewelry.com. Most new systems today, it's important to remember to maintain the warranty. You need to show proof of service. Things that you can expect from Larry's Heating and Cooling Comfort Care Club are prompt, timely service, two maintenances, and respect. If you ever have an issue, from Lennox to Carrier and everything in between, we're there for you. For any inquiries about our pricing, feel free to call us at 1-800-491-9461. Anytime, any day. Insurance can be complicated, but it doesn't have to be when you insure with Midwest Insurance Agency located at 3016 Piper Street. Through three generations, Midwest Insurance Agency has numerous awards and has spent many hours serving the community. Travis and Whitney Devine carry on that family legacy. Whether it's the family farm or a vehicle, make sure it's protected. Midwest Insurance at the corner of Piper Street and 31st. Stop or call for your quote today. All right, back at the Yankton High School Summit Activity Center gym, the Gazelle Seniors and the Sideline Cheer Seniors are being introduced here. Now let's bring you tonight's starting lineups. First of all, for T area, at a forward, Bryn Shupner, a 5'9 senior, and the four-guard set of Kendra McKinney, a 5'6 junior, Grace Stansbury, a 5'5 senior, Cassidy Gores, a 5'4 senior, and Katie Basica, a 6'2 sophomore. Expect to see Mara Grant, a 5'11 sophomore, Stella Peterson, a 5'7 junior, and Caitlin Kunert, a 5'9 senior off the bench first for T-area. For the Yankton Gazelles, at a forward, Jordan Salvatore, 6-foot senior, the other forward, Kate Beeman, a 5'11 senior, and the three-guard set of Jillian Eisnes, a 5'5 senior. Ellie Karlovitz gets the start tonight. Only ceremonial, though, a 5'10 senior. And Molly Savvy, the other guard, a 5'8 senior. And we will give you the Gazelles reserves in just one minute here on Five Star Streaming from YouTube. New year, new flooring. I plan on saying hello with new flooring from Larson Carpet in Yankton. Larson Carpet will help with design and installation. They have a great selection of carpet, vinyl, luxury vinyl plank, hardwood, and tile. Stop in and let them help you get a new look in the new year. Larson Carpet at 208 Walnut Street in the Meridian District in Yankton. For the best flooring for your space, lifestyle, and budget, see Larson Carpet. From simple sniffles to complex health conditions, the primary care providers at Yankton Medical Clinic will not only see you for your annual visits, screenings, and preventative care, but also provides care for the entire family, from pediatrics to adults. With four clinic locations and 15 outreach locations throughout South Dakota and Nebraska, compassionate, quality medical care is closer than you think. For more information on providers, services, and locations, visit our website, yanktonmedicalclinic.com. As we come back to the Yankton High School Summit Activity Center gym, the last strains of our national anthem, we gave you the Gazelle starting lineup. Here are their reserves. Claire Tarashinsky, a 5'5 sophomore. Bailey LaCroix, a 5'6 sophomore. Cameron Koletsky, a 5'10 sophomore. 
and Macy Drotsman, a 5'9 sophomore, along with Ellie Fieser, a 5'5 senior. T area is in their road dark blue or even black, trimmed out in gold. The Yankton Gazelles in their home uniforms, that is white, trimmed out in red and in black. Our officials tonight, the referee is Jim Haskamp. The umpires are Donnie Kaiser and Don McEnroy. And now, Michael, it's time for What's Hot and What's Not, brought to you by Larry's Heating and Cooling of Yankton and Vermillion. Larry's your Lennox and Carrier dealer anytime, any day. Well, I tell you what's hot is being able to be here on senior night, seeing these uh, five gazelles who have put a lot into this team over the last four years uh, get recognized, and I think that's just uh, it's a, it's a good experience. Having experienced last year with Leela, I, I know what these parents are going through, and it's a, it's a big night, and so it's just fun to be here for that. And what's not is I, I know basketball seasons uh, can get long and complicated, but seeing the light at the end of the tunnel is, is a little sad, a little not hot. So yeah, I'll, right. I'll be honest. It's my first season doing this, and I've uh, been enjoying it. No, no doubt. Uh, we've enjoyed having you, Michael. And coming up uh, after this game, again, the Yankton Bucks and the T-Area Titans will play. And then next Tuesday, Bucks and Gazelles take on Brookings and ESD action. And then a week from Friday and Saturday at Spearfish and at Sturgis to wrap up the regular season. The girls, Sodak 16 is March 4th. The boys, Sodak 16, is March 5th. On the Fox Stop scoreboard in the sub-varsity games, T-Area defeated the Yankton JVs 36-33 on a late three. Macy Drotsman had 14 points and nine rebounds. And in the freshman game, T-Area defeated Yankton 40-8. And for the boys, the boys JV score, Yankton 64 and T-Area 59. The Bucks JVs had four in double figures led by Drew Riken with 17 points. No score on the sophomore game. So Jordan Salvatore will jump for Yankton. Cassidy Gores is jumping for T-Area. We do see Ellie Karlovitz. They Tip it to Karlovitz, and now Ellie will come out of the game, and Claire Tereshinsky will come in for her. But great to see Ellie Karlovitz, the 5'10 senior, back on the floor for the Yankton Gazelles. And Coach Creer tells me she'll be ready to go by Tuesday night's game against Brookings in ESD action here. So T area will get the ball first. Here is the Sika. To the left side to Stansbury. Here is McKinney. Like we said, they'll give it to Vasika. Vasika on the drive to the right. And from the free throw line, a wide open shot good by Cassidy Gore. She is fouled and will go to the line to try to complete the old fashioned three point play as the foul is on Jillian Eisness. Her first, team's first. So at the line, Cassidy Gores, she is four of six from the line, 66%, completes the three-point play, and T-Area with an early 3-0 lead with about 20 seconds gone in the game. For Yankton, Beeman across the timeline, Salvatore. Moving it from the right is Tereshinsky. Tereshinsky to Savvy, left side Eisness, down low to Beeman. Beeman drives in the lane, Turnaround uh, jump hook is no good, and the rebound to T area as Vasika up ahead will go to Cassidy Gores. Might have got away with a walk. Here's a three from the left side, no good by McKinney, and the rebound to Yankton. Yankton trails 3 0. One minute gone in the first quarter on the Fox Stop scoreboard in game one of our doubleheader. Here's a ball down low to Beeman, knocked off the floor by Bryn Schupner. So on the near sideline, Molly Savvy will throw it in. And she gets it in to Tereshinsky. Claire to Savvy, who's been shooting well from three lately. Down low to Salvatore around Vasika. Layup is good. And the Gazelles are on the board, trailing 3-2 to two with five, uh, 6.45 left to go first quarter. Here's Vasika. Vasika to the left, trying to get around Salvatore. Here's a pull-up three. That won't fall. 
for Cassidy Gores, who has a three-point play for T-Area. Yankton the other way with a chance to take their first lead of the game. Here's Eisness. Eisness with a screen from Beeman. And they call it an illegal screen. Foul is on Kate Beeman. That's her first, team second. And from the near sideline, McKinney will get it into Vasika, who does about 98% of the ball handling on offense for T area. Vasika to the left side to Stansbury. To Vasika trying to shake Molly Savvy. Here's a kick out and a drive and a basket good by Bryn Shepner. She is the second Lady Titans starter to score, and it's 5 to 2 Lady Titans as Tereshinsky loses the ball at midcourt on the far sideline. T area will play it in with a 5 2 lead with 5.56 left to go, first quarter on the Fox Stop scoreboard. Vasika. Looking for a screen, will range to the right, now to the middle, will get a screen. A pass down low. Here is Gores to the right side. Here is McKinney. As you can guess, T area has some uh, hard to read numbers on their uniforms. <laughs> and we did uh, make that point. Here's a turnaround in the lane, no good by Shepner. And the rebound to Yankton. Here comes Claire Tereshinsky. 5-2 T area, 5-15 left to go in the first quarter. A sub coming in for T area at the next dead ball. Right side, quick three by Tereshinsky is an air ball. And the rebound on the end line to McKinney. McKinney into the front court. Almost a steal by Eisnes. Here's Vasika on the drive through two gazelles. And a foul on the floor on Yankton. The foul is on Molly Savvy, her first, team's third. T area will bring in Caitlin Cooner to 5'9 senior as Yankton with some full court pressure. Here's Shepner. Here is a drive by Vasika, and the layup is good. Katie Vasika makes it 7 2, T area, with 441 left to go in the first quarter. Beeman to Tereshinsky. Left side to Eisnes. Eisnes, left side, Tereshinsky for three, and it's short. The ball off the floor. It'll belong to T area. Yankton will bring in Ellie Fieser, the 5'5 senior, and Macy Drotsman, the 5'9 sophomore, in for Savvy and Salvatore. So T area on a 4 0 run after Yankton got to within 3 to 2. We're almost halfway through the first quarter. Vasika, open free throw line shot and a travel by Shepner. Shepner had a wide open shot, decided to take a dribble, dra- uh, dragged her pivot foot first. And it will be Gazelle basketball against full court pressure from the Lady Titans. Here's Beeman. Beeman across the timeline. Tereshinsky driving in from the right. In the left corner. No, here's a jumper by Eisness on the line that's no good. And the rebound to Shepner for T area. Here's Vasika. 7-2 to T area. 3.50 left to go first quarter on the Fox Stop scoreboard. Here's a pass that Schuppner will take and go to the basket and will score. Schuppner has four, and now it's a 6 nothing run by T. area, leading 9-2. 3.31 left to go first quarter on the Fox Stop scoreboard. Out front, Claire Tereshinsky to Eisnes on the right. Here's Beeman, left side, Tereshinsky for three, and it's good! Claire Tereshinsky with uh, three-pointer number 29 on the season. And that breaks a T-0, 6 nothing run. And it's 9-5 T area. Vasika, left corner three, is an air ball. That air ball was by Kendra McKinney. And back the other way comes Yankton. Here's Ellie Fieser on the right. Here's Eisnes. To Drotsman, to Beeman, thought about a three, 
but Schuppner came up on defense. Beeman spins in the lane, gives it to Fieser going to the basket, and the layup too strong. Rebound Vasika, lost it for a moment, now got it back. 9-5 T area, 2.30 left to go, first quarter on the Fox Stop scoreboard. Here's a three, left side, no good, by Stella Peterson, a 5'7 junior who checked in when we weren't looking. And a foul on T area. Grace Stansbury will pick up her first, team's first. Salvatore and Savvy back in for Yankton. Mara Grant, a 5'11 sophomore, in for T area. And it's Yankton basketball, trailing 9-5, 2.19 left to go, first quarter. In the front court, Tereshinsky. Both teams, by the way, playing man-to-man defensively. Quick three by Tereshinsky, short. Offensive rebound to Savvy, up with the left hand off the glass in. Molly is the second gazelle starter to score, and it's 9-7. A modest 4-0 run. Vasika to the rack from the left side. Layup is good. And fouled by Macy Drotsman. Vasika with four points goes to the line to try to complete the three-point play. Macy Drotsman with her first, team's fourth. Vasika on the season, 91 of 121 for 75%. That is a lot. And she completes the three-point play to give her five points. Coming in is Cassidy Gores, who started off the game for T-Area with a three-point play. 12-7 T-Area, under two minutes to go in the first quarter. Claire Tereshinsky walks it across the timeline, right side to Savvy. Savvy out front to Drotsman. Drotsman, right side, Tereshinsky called for traveling. Trying to get it inside to Salvatore. It'll be T-Area basketball with a 12-7 lead. 1.41 1.41 left to go first quarter on the Fox Stop scoreboard. Again, the Bucks and the Titans come up next. Getting a late start, obviously, because of the length of the sub-varsity games and senior night. They'll have senior night for the boys as well. Here's a tip pass intercepted by Tereshinsky. Tereshinsky moving in from the right. Tried to go down low to Savvy, and it's off the floor. It'll belong to T-Area. Ray Stansbury back in for T-Area. Jillian Eisness back in for Yankton. T-Area with the ball, leading 12-7. 1-11 left to go. 1-17, I should say, left to go first quarter on the Fox Stop scoreboard. Here comes Katie Vasika. Vasika in the middle, looking for a screen. Goes right side to Gores. Gores on the high post. Down low to Schuppner and a tie-up. We'll give it back to T-Area underneath their own basket. Kendra McKinney back in for T-Area. And coming out is Bryn Schuppner, who has four of their 12 points. Vasika leads with five. Out front, here's Vasika, guarded by Molly Savvy. Grace Stansbury. Here's a drive by Vasika and a blocking foul on Jordan Salvatore. I believe so. No, they give the foul to Molly Savvy, her second, team's fifth. Vasika at the line. No. A non shooting foul then. So Kate Beeman is in. For Savvy, who has two points and now two fouls with 47 seconds left in the quarter. T-Area throws it in on the end line. And underneath, Mara Grant had a wide open two-foot shot, but she missed it. And Yankton with the rebound. Gazelle's trail, 12-7 on the Fox Stop scoreboard. 35 seconds left to go. About a seven-second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. Left side, Tereshinsky driving in. Off the glass, good. Claire Tereshinsky with five, and the Gazelles within three. Shot clock is off. Vasika trying to clear out everybody, driving on Beeman in the lane. Short shot is too strong with the offensive rebound to T-Area. Shot from the left corner for three is good. And that three-pointer 
by Cassidy Gores. 15 to 9, and that's how the first quarter will end. T area 15, Yankton 9. Let's take a 60 second Culligan water break. Culligan water of Yankton, think outside the bottle at 401 East 4th Street in Yankton back in one minute on Five Star Streaming. New year, new flooring. I plan on saying hello with new flooring from Larson Carpet in Yankton. Larson Carpet will help with design and installation. They have a great selection of carpet, vinyl, luxury vinyl plank, hardwood, and tile. Stop in and let them help you get a new look in the new year. Larson Carpet at 208 Walnut Street in the Meridian District in Yankton. For the best flooring for your space, lifestyle, and budget, see Larson Carpet. From simple sniffles to complex health conditions, the primary care providers at Yankton Medical Clinic will not only see you for your annual visits, screenings, and preventative care, but also provides care for the entire family, from pediatrics to adults. With four clinic locations and 15 outreach locations throughout South Dakota and Nebraska, compassionate, quality medical care is closer than you think. For more information on providers, services, and locations, visit our website, yanktonmedicalclinic.com. All right, we go to the second quarter. T areas, Cassidy Gores gets a three just before the first quarter buzzer. That is her 21st three of the season. And Yankton down by six with the basketball here on the near sideline. Jillian Eisness will get it in to Claire Tereshinsky. On the high post, Salvatore. Salvatore in the lane. Short jumper won't get the roll. Battle for the rebound. It comes to T area to Shupner, now to Katie Vasica. Up ahead to the right to McKinney. McKinney in the lane to Shupner. Shupner and a pass intended for McKinney, intercepted by Claire Tereshinsky and a T-area foul on Kendra McKinney. That's her first, team second. So here comes Claire Tereshinsky across the timeline. Starts on the right, brings it toward the middle. Backs up for a three, and it's an air ball out of bounds to T area. 7.25 left to go first half on the Fox Stop scoreboard. T area 15, and Yankton 9. Vasika into the front court. Vasika between the circles, guarded by Beeman. Down low here, Shupner. Drives in, off the glass, too strong. Rebound, Salvatore. And it goes to clear Tereshinsky, who does about 80-90% of the ball handling on offense for Yankton. Clear to the left, gets the screen from Salvatore. Right side to Eisnes. Down low, Salvatore wide open, and she'll score. Salvatore with four. 15-11 T area. 6.49 left to go first half. Vasica. Out front for the Lady Titans. Vasika to the right, driving in from the right over Salvatore. And off the glass, good. Mm. That was a pretty shot, and Vasika with seven to have a 17-11 Lady Titan lead. 6.29 left to go first half on the Fox Stop scoreboard. Of course, on five-star streaming from YouTube tonight because of University of South Dakota basketball on five-star communications. Down low, Salvatore. Had one off the glass, too strong. Knocked off the floor by T area. It'll be Yankton basketball. Molly Savvy will check in for Macy Drotsman. Mara Grant is back in. It goes into Beeman to Tereshinsky. Right side to Savvy, playing with two fouls. Down low, it goes to Beeman. Beeman lost it. A steal by Grant. Grant has it on the right side outside the arc. We'll get it to Vasika. Vasika on the drive. Down low to Shepner. Posted up on Salvatore on the block. Here's a three by McKinney that short. Offensive rebound to Shepner, who got smucked in the face by Salvatore. No call. Yankton the other way. Here is Tereshinsky. Left side to Eisnes. Here's Beeman for a three, and it's too strong. And a foul on the rebound on Yankton. That might make up for the one that Salvatore, as she does get the foul. That's her first T 
team sixth. That might have been a makeup for the foul <laughs> on Shepner <laughs> on the T area end. We don't know. <laughs> 17 to 11, T area over Yankton. 528 left to go. First half on the Fox Snap scoreboard. Vasika driving down low to Shepner. And here's a hand check foul and a one and one for Vasika. Ellie Fieser will pick up her first personal, 17. Vasika with seven points to lead all scorers. Completed a three-point play in the first half. And will be shooting one and one here. Front end, no good. Battle for the rebound. Picking it up is Fieser. Fieser lost it. And now picked up by Eisness. It goes to Tereshinsky. A timeout wanted by Yankton, a 30-second Culligan water break. Culligan water of Yankton, think outside the bottle at 401 East 4th Street in Yankton. Well, T-area leads 17-11. to Gazelle's hanging in there, Michael. They are, and but they, they just cannot get some shots to fall. They've had some good looks. Uh, so if they can get those to start to fall, they're really going to be in it for the entire game. Uh, but that uh, the sophomore for T, she is everything that... Uh, She's cracked up to be. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Yep. She can hoop, and she's got two more years. Yeah, she'll be somebody to watch the next two years, that's well, for I, sure. I wouldn't be too surprised if uh, some in-state school hasn't signed her already or verbaled her or oh, yeah. whatever. I don't know. I I guess I forgot to ask that question to Adam Shoresman. 17-11, to T-area over Yankton. 5-11 left to go first half. Again, Vasika averaging almost 20 points, 8 rebounds a game. 29 threes coming into tonight's game. So after the Yankton timeout, here's Tereshinsky. Claire in the middle to Salvatore. Salvatore hands it off to Savvy. A pull-up wide open three is no good. And off the floor, saved by Fieser, but for Vasika. Vasika on a break. Goes to Grant, layup short. Rebound, knocked off of Jordan Salvatore. It'll be T-area basketball, and now Jordan Salvatore got a basketball in the face. She'll come out, and Kate Beeman will come back in. Macy Drotsman will also come back in for Yankton. And... Here is a drive by Grant, missed another layup, got the ball back, a tie-up. It'll go back to T area because Yankton started the second quarter with the basketball. They ran an out-of-bounds play with four beyond the arc and then just came flying in, and Grant had an easy layup but missed it. Inbounds pass to Shupner. It'll go to Grant, driving again, and this time she'll get the layup. First bench points for T area. T area has outscored Yankton 4-2 so far in the second quarter. 4-21 left in the half on the Fox Stop scoreboard. 19-11 T area. Yankton turns it over again. Vasika across the timeline. She'll be guarded this time by Ellie Fieser. There's a double screen. It goes down low to Grant. Grant from the right side of the lane, shot up and good. She has four straight, and now T area by their biggest lead of 10, 21 to 11, under four minutes to go in the first half on the Fox Top scoreboard. Tereshinsky to Drotsman, now to Fieser. Fieser lost the ball again, taken away by Shepner, and Ellie trying to get the ball back is called for a foul. So Ellie Fieser with her second, team's eighth. Yankton will bring back in Salvatore and Savvy. Three coming in for T area. Cassidy Gores. Stella Peterson is coming in. And at the table, or at the line, is Shupner. 37 of 49 from the free throw line, 75% shooting a one and one, and the front end is good. She's got five. And it's 22 to 11. The Lady Titans have doubled up the Gazelles. So Shupner with the back end of the one and one. Too strong. And the rebound to Savvy. 
She'll let everybody clear and bring it into the front court. Goes to Eisnes. Eisnes down low to Drotsman. Drotsman posted up on Katie Vasika. Vasika takes the ball away and heads down court. A running jumper is good from just inside the three-point line. She just put it up there, and she scored. <laughs> and now T-Area on a run to lead 24-11. to 11. So T-Area now has outscored the Gazelles 9-2. to two. Here's a three by Eisnes, completely missing the mark, and the rebound to T-Area. Three minutes to go first half, and T-Area taking advantage of cold shooting by the Gazelles again in a second quarter. Here at the free throw line is Grant. Grant to Vasika. Grant gets a return pass, misses a layup again off the floor. It'll belong to Yankton. T area will bring back in Grace Stansbury. Also coming back in, Kendra McKinney. Bailey LaCroix will come in for Yankton for the first time, the 5'6 sophomore, and Jillian Eisness will come out. Gazelles need a good offensive push here, down 13 after they were down. Only three at 12 to 9 in the first quarter, 15 to 9 after one quarter. Here's Drotsman, left side to Tereshinsky, to Savvy, right side LaCroix, and open three. It won't fall, and the rebound to Grant for T area. 24 to 11, 216 left to go, first half. For T-Area, Stella Peterson, down low to Grant, baseline jumper will crawl in. She has six off the bench this quarter and a timeout wanted by Yankton, a full timeout. Michael, let's take a 60-second break on Five Star Streaming from YouTube. Angel Crossing in Yankton, you can find kids' clothes, infant to 14, for the boys and girls. There's Under Armour, Ruffle Butts, and other great brand names at the store. You can find Melissa and Duck Toys, Specialty Toys. Ladies, Linda can dress you too. Jeans, tops, and sweaters by Tribal Jag, Charlie Page, and Charlie B. Casual to business wear. All at Linda's Angel Crossing, 1101 Broadway in Yankton. Open Monday through Saturday, 10 to 6. Dr. Pyle at the Veterinary Medical Clinic is dedicated to keeping your pet safe, happy, and healthy. Whether your pet needs a checkup, grooming, surgery, or a safe place to stay while you are out of town, Dr. Pyle and his staff are trained to handle your pet care needs. Dr. Pyle and his staff are proud supporters of Bucks and Gazelles academics and athletics. Veterinary Medical Clinic is ready to serve all of your pet care needs. Veterinary Medical Clinic, 1603 Broadway, Yankton. 665-9441. An 11-2 run for T-Area here in the second quarter. Again, the Gazelles leading Sioux Falls Christian Tuesday night, 15-14 after a quarter. We're outscored 20-5 in the second quarter, and T-Area putting on a similar type quarter that the Gazelles saw on Tuesday night. Gazelle basketball after their second timeout. Here's Beeman on the left to Salvatore. Tereshinsky to Fieser, Fieser to Beeman, inside to Salvatore. Beeman from the free throw line, too strong, and the rebound to Stansbury for T-Area. Vasika is not on the floor right now. Maybe that end of first half rest as out front for T-Area is Stella Peterson. Down low to Grant, right side of the lane, off the glass, too short, and the rebound to Kate Beeman. Gazelle's got some work to do with 120 or 118 left to go in the half. Down 26 to 11, their biggest deficit. Right side, Fieser, down low to Salvatore, and a foul from behind on Stella Peterson. Her first, only the third team foul on T area this half. And now Katie Vasica, after a short rest, comes back in. Also coming back in, Bryn Schupner. Again, Vasika with nine, Shepner with five points to lead T area. Inbounds pass, Tereshinsky for three from the right, won't fall. And the rebound to T area to Vasika with 105 left to go in the half. And the Lady Titans leading the Gazelles 26 to 11 on the Fox Stop scoreboard. Here down low, Shepner will get a nice lob pass and score off the glass. She has seven, and it's 28 to 11. 50 seconds left in the half. 
for Yankton. Here's Fieser to Tereshinsky. Here's a three by LaCroix, an air ball off the floor to T area with 39.1 left in the half. Eisnes and Drotsman will check back in for Yankton. For Beeman and for Fieser. It goes into Vasika. Vasika walks it across the timeline. About a four second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. Vasika will get it over to Stansbury. Cassidy Gores to the right side to McKinney to Vasika, no, to Shupner at the free throw line. Here from the right corner, a three by Gores is no good. Rebound tracked down by Eisnes with seven, six, five, four. Tereshinsky driving the lane, short shot, no good at the buzzer. And at halftime, it's T Area 28, Yankton 11 on the Fox Stop scoreboard. Coming up is halftime, brought to you by Joe Dean's, the South Dakota tradition, North Broadway, Yankton, home of the $4 dinners to go every day, chicken, catfish, walleye, and shrimp. Grab a calendar of the month for more $4 dinners to go. Seafood buffet every Friday and Saturday night. Sunday breakfast buffet starting at 10.30 a.m. Call Jodine 665-9884 for your to-go order. Back with halftime in two minutes here on Five Star Streaming from YouTube. I chose Mount Marty because of the sense of community I felt ever since I first stepped on campus. I've been prepared for my career in nursing through the hands-on experience I get through classes and getting to start clinicals in my sophomore year. Here at MMU, there are countless things for you to do, whether you're on a sports team, in the theater program, or just hanging out with friends. When the weather's nice, my friends and I like to go out to the lake and go swimming, play some beach volleyball, or just hang out. Sign Tech on East Highway 50 is your full service sign shop. Dave of Sign Tech handles sales, service, and installation of signs of all kinds from magnets, banners, truck and vinyl lettering, digital printing, full color decals, and more. You can also rent a portable LED sign. Call Dave at 605 665 2957. Sign Tech is a proud sponsor of Yankton Bucks and Gazelles Athletics. Next time you're thinking of a place to eat, think The River's Edge at 114 Capital in Yankton. The River's Edge in Yankton offers a diverse and unique menu. And with both indoor seating as well as patio seating overlooking the Missouri River, The River's Edge is a come-as-you-are restaurant. Whether it's for a date night, a day off, or just a quick lunch, you are always welcome at The River's Edge. They feature locally sourced ingredients and classic cocktails. Their menu changes seasonally, so your experience will always be unique. If you're looking to host any kind of event, such as receptions or holiday parties, The River's Edge can help make that evening perfect. The Riverfront and Brewery Events Centers and Hotels Yankton has choices for a bride and groom at your wedding reception. Different spaces are available for your wedding reception and the price is very competitive. Have your wedding reception where they offer you plenty of time for the decorating you and your family want to do and plenty of time for cleanup too. At the Riverfront and Brewery Events Centers and Hotels, you have two and a half day venue that's all yours. See more by cruising the website, Riverfront and Brewery Events Centers and Hotels. Along with Michael Schumacher, Joe Van Gore, our Yankton Sportscaster Club members that bring you Yankton Bucks and Gazelles basketball on Five Star Communications. Yankton High School basketball presented by FNBO. And at the half here at the Yankton High School Summit Activity Center, Jim, T Area 28 and Yankton 11. Yankton trailed 12 to 9 late in the first quarter. T Area. Led 15 to 9 after one quarter, but T area with a 13 to 2 run in the second quarter. And Michael, uh, following a pattern that the Gazelles unfortunately have seen far too often this season. Yeah, they come out of the gates fairly strong. They're able to be competitive, and then that second quarter, th something just seems to happen, and they went cold. Um, I mean, really cold from inside, outside. They were getting shots and taking shots, and they just couldn't hit. Uh, and then, yeah, T just, and they were, T was hitting. You know, whether they were driving and hitting easy layups or, uh, you know, hitting from the outside or that, or that one runner just inside the yeah. three-point line, they couldn't miss. And so it was an unfortunate uh, mix of both circumstances. All right. 
in the first half, three out of the five T area starters have scored one off the bench. Katie Vasika, averaging almost 20 points a game, has nine at the half. Bryn Stupner with seven. Cassidy Gores with six among the starters. Off the bench, Mara Grant has six. Kendra McKinney of Green Stansbury started at guard for T area, didn't score. Stella Peterson and Caitlin Coonard played, but didn't score. T area, 12 field goals, one of those a three pointer by Cassidy Gores. They are three out of five from the free throw line. Yankton, two out of their five starters have scored, one off the bench, and Claire Tereshinsky off the bench as Ellie Karlovitz started for her for a couple seconds. Has five to lead the Gazelles at the half. Jordan Salvatore with four. Molly Savvy with two. Kate Beeman. Jillian Eisness also started for Yankton but didn't score. Bailey LaCroix. Macy Drotsman. Ellie Fieser played off the bench for Yankton but didn't score. The Gazelles, five field goals. One of those, a three-pointer by Claire Tereshinsky. Yankton did not go to the free throw line in the first half. And T area leads by 17 at the half, 28 to 11. We'll be back in one minute with Beyond the Game, brought to you by the Riverfront Event Center in downtown Yankton here on Five Star Streaming from YouTube. Who can help you undo the damage done by fire or water? Search no further than the experts at Service Master Restore, who have the experience and know-how to make your home feel whole again. For 65 years, we've helped people go from disaster to done. Service Master Restore. Hey, I think I'll take the day off. Is your old furnace talking back to you? You're flying solo today, pal. I need a little me time. The Kalins Indoor Comfort Pros can repair your grumpy old furnace or replace it with a new high-efficiency Linux system. Yeah, sorry. I just can't seem to move any air today. Hmm, we'll see about that. Get a dependable Linux system from Kalins and start saving today. Linux. Air is life. Make it perfect. On the Jodine's Halftime Show... T area 28, the Yankton Gazelles 11, time for Beyond the Game, brought to you by the Riverfront Event Center, downtown Yankton. Love, live, eat, stay, and have fun at the Riverfront Event Center. On the Yankton Public Schools calendar, Friday and Saturday, debate varsity district tournament at Sioux Falls Jefferson. Next Monday, no school for President's Day. Next Thursday, February 24th, elementary parent-teacher conferences at the four elementary schools in Yankton. And on Friday and Saturday, February 25th and 26th, debate varsity district tournament, Northern District National Qualifying at Brookings High School. And that is Beyond the Game, brought to you by the Riverfront Event Center, downtown Yankton. Love, live, eat, stay, and have fun at the Riverfront Event Center. Coming up in one minute, we'll have a look at the Fox Stop scoreboard for AA Girls Basketball. You're watching and listening to Gazelle Basketball on Five Star Streaming from YouTube. Are you looking for the next great career opportunity? Then make it Sherco, a staple of the Yankton community for nearly 30 years. Sherco offers career opportunities in engineering, sales, marketing, accounting, tarp and metal fabrication, shipping, and more. Enjoy a year-round climate controlled facility, 401k options, affordable health, dental and vision care, paid time off, and 10 paid holidays. Make Sherco your next great opportunity. Learn more at Sherco.com slash careers. The Evergreen Credit Card by FNBO. Earn unlimited 2% cash back on every purchase, every day, everywhere. Never worry about expiring points or category restrictions. Plus, there's no annual fee. Only from the great big small bank. A bank ever ready for you to earn more, wherever life leads. Evergreen by FNBO. All right, time for the Fox Stop scoreboard for AA Girls Basketball. The Fox Stop, located on the corner of West City Limits Road and 31st Street in Yankton, open 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. daily, a full-service convenience store with gas, diesel, food, munchies, beverages, the cellar, and the video lottery room. 
The only other double-A score we have, Spearfish leads Brandon Valley 16-14 to at halftime. Again, this is girls' double-A action. No scores as of yet. Roosevelt and Lincoln, Sturgis and Red Cloud, and Douglas and, Spear, uh, Douglas and Spearfish. Oh, could that be right? Hmm. I've got Spearfish playing Brandon Valley and then Douglas playing Spearfish. All right. Something got screwed up. <laughs> In the sub-varsity games, T area defeated the Yankton JVs 36-33 to on a last-second three. Macy Drotsman had 14 points and nine rebounds for the JVs. And T area defeated the Yankton freshman 40-8. All right, second half, Yankton will start Jordan Salvatore, Kate Beeman, Jillian Eisness, Claire Tereshinsky, and Molly Savvy. Again, Ellie Karlovitz started, but only was taken off the floor after the first jump ball, and T area got the ball. T area will start in the second half, Bryn Shupner, Kendra McKinney, Grace Stansbury, Cassidy Gores, and Katie Vasica. It will be Yankton basketball to start the second half. So on the near sideline, Molly Savvy will throw it in. And it goes in to Claire Tereshinsky. Both teams played man-to-man in the first half. T area continues in the man-to-man as Yankton moves left to right here in the second half. Here down low is Beeman, double teamed, goes to Tereshinsky. Tereshinsky, right corner to Savvy. Savvy down low to Salvatore. Beeman, left side, Tereshinsky for three, and it's good. Good ball movement by the Gazelles as Claire Tereshinsky with her second three has eight. And it's 28-14. T area moving right to left here in the second half. Vasica tried to go down low to Gores, but the ball knocked off the floor by Tereshinsky of Yankton. And here's T area starting. It goes into Shepner on the left. Shepner to Gores. Here's Vasika down low to uh, Gores or to Shepner who missed the layup. They love that uh, give and go between Vasika and Shepner. Here the other way. Reverse layup good by Claire Tereshinsky. She is the first Gazelle in double figures with 10. And it's 28-16. Gazelle starting the third on a 4-0 run. Here's Vasika to Gores. Left corner to McKinney. Down low to Shepner, fouled by Jordan Salvatore. Jordan Salvatore with her first, team's first. Shepner, one out of two from the line with seven points in the first half. T area as a team in the first half, three out of five. And the first of two on a two-shot foul is good. She's got eight. And it's 29-16 T area. 6.45 left to go, third quarter on the Fox Stop scoreboard. Second on the way, good. T area, now five of seven from the line. Shepner with nine points, as does Katie Vasica. For the Gazelles, Savvy left side for a three, and it's an air ball. Vasika gets the rebound, keeps it away from Eisness, and now Vasika will jog it across the timeline. Trying to drive from the left side, goes to Gores. Out front to McKinney. Here's Vasika, left side to Gores. Gores driving in the lane, now backing out, now driving down. Will lob it for Vasika, eight to shoot, pass inside, knocked away, taken by Salvatore. Up ahead, here's Tereshinsky, Claire stopped, goes to Eisnes for a three, and it's good! Jillian Eisnes with a three for Jillian, his seventh of the season. And the Gazelles, just like that, with an 11, 30 to 19, 541 left to go as the Gazelles have outscored the Lady Titans 8-2 to two so far in this third quarter. And here's the steal by Tereshinsky at the other end. Stops, goes up for a layup, missed it. Rebound to Savvy. Here's Beeman to Tereshinsky. Left side to Isness. Now to Beeman. 
Demon to Savvy. Right side, Tereshinsky. They know about her now. Left side, Beeman in the corner. Savvy for three, and it's good! Molly Savvy with the third three this quarter. 11 points, and T-Area wants a 30-second timeout. Molly Savvy with her 11-3 of the season, and Michael, as we have a 30-second Culligan water break, charged to T-Area. Culligan water of Yankton, think outside the bottle at 401 East 4th Street in Yankton. Molly has been shooting the three very well lately. Molly really has. The last uh, three or four games, we can just really see a difference in her confidence, and it's a good timing for them. Uh, and, you know, the difference is the Gazelles are taking advantage of their open shots, they're, and uh, they're making a game of it. Yep, after trailing 28-11 to 11 at the half, the T area lead is 8 at 30-22. to 22. So Adam Shoresman will take his... First time out of the game, a 30. He has four left. The Gazelles have two fulls and a 30 left for timeouts. So after the timeout, Vasika will get it in to McKinney. And McKinney will bring it up the court. Let's see if they post up Vasika. McKinney will hand it off to Stella Peterson, who's in. Mara Grant, who had six points in the second quarter, is back in. Here's Vasika. Here's a three left side by McKinney. That's an air ball saved from going off the floor by Shepner, but for Kate Beeman of Yankton. Gazelle's down by eight on an 11-2 run. We're almost halfway through the third quarter already. Savvy on the left to Salvatore to Beeman. Beeman from the free throw line, well, had to adjust her shot, and it was an air ball taken by T area. Vasika left side. Here's a three that won't fall for Peterson. And a strong rebound by Beeman of Yankton. Gazelle's down eight. Down low, wide open is Savvy from Salvatore. And Molly Savvy with five of her seven. And now the Gazelles within two possessions. Six points, 30 to 24. Four minutes left to go in the third quarter on the Fox Stop scoreboard. Out front, Katie Vasika. Vasika will get a screen from Grant. Drives inside, and the layup too strong. A gazelle hits the floor, and just like that, the gazelles have it again. Gazelles on a 13-2 run in the first four minutes of the third quarter. Inside Salvatore in traffic. Misses the shot. Rebound Vasika. Vasika will hurry it across the timeline. Goes down low to... Grant, who couldn't handle it, and taken by Yankton. Back the other way, Claire Tereshinsky. Right side to Beeman. Beeman to Isness. Left side, Tereshinsky driving. Can't find anything off Peterson to Salvatore. Down low to Beeman. Turn around, in the lane, off the glass. Good! She was fouled! And will go to the line to try to complete the three-point play as Yankton now within four at 30 to 26. Kendra McKinney with her second, team's first. Cassidy Gores and Grace Stansbury back in for T area. Macy Drotsman and Ellie Fieser back in for Yankton. Beeman from the line is 19 of 35. And the free throw is good. And Yankton down by one possession. 30-27 to 27 on a 16-2 to 2 run. With 2.57 left to go, third quarter on the Fox Stop scoreboard. Here's Vasika inside to Shepner. Here's a dead-on three. That's good by Kendra McKinney. McKinney with her 15-3 of the season. Stops a Yankton run. 33-27. Down low, here is Fieser. She scores and she was fouled by Grant and will go to the line to try to complete the three-point play. First foul on Grant, second team foul on T area. Fieser with the bucket. And at the line, Ellie is 7 of 18, 39%. Jordan Salvatore in for Kate Beeman, who has a three-point play this half. Yankton has exploded. To come within three, and Fieser's free throw is missed. Rebound to Shepner. 
2.31 left to go, third quarter on the Fox Stop scoreboard. 33-29, T-area. Here's Vasika, shot blocked by Salvatore, dug out by Tereshinsky. Claire the other way, down low to Salvatore, baseline jumper short. And the rebound to Shupner again. Here comes Katie Vasika, who averages 19 and a half, has nine. No points so far in the second half. Here is Stansbury to Gores. Gores, a pop-up three, good. Cassidy Gores with her second three. She is one of three T-area starters with nine points apiece. 36-29, Tereshinsky slid down, didn't lose her dribble. Brings it across the timeline. Tereshinsky on the left. 142 left to go in the third. Here's Strotsman to Tereshinsky, an open three, good! Claire Tereshinsky, second three of the quarter, three in the game. She has 13, 36-32, T-area. Vasika on the drive, leans in, scores and was fouled by Fieser. That's Fieser's third, team second. Vasika is the first lady Titan in double figures with 11. One out of two from the line, and will try to complete the three-point play. Kendra McKinney comes back in for Yankton. Kate Beeman, Molly Savvy will come back in. It's 38 to 32. Again, the Gazelles down 28 to 11, and the free throw by Vasika gives her 12 to make it 39-32. 119 left to go, third quarter. And a big one for the Gazelles. They just need to keep it under 10 going into the fourth quarter. Right side, Savvy, and open three. Bingo! Molly Savvy is in double figures with 10. Her second three of the quarter, 39-35. 54 seconds to go in the third quarter. Here's Shupner. Left side three by McKinney. No good. Rebound Salvatore and gets it to Claire Tereshinsky. Claire will bring it across the timeline. Left side to Savvy. Looking down low. Out front to Fieser. Fieser, left side Salvatore. 35 to play. 18 to shoot in the third quarter. Down low, it goes to Savvy. And Savvy will get it to Salvatore. Here's Beeman. Open three by Fieser. No good. And the rebound to Shupner. Shot clock is off. 20 seconds to play in the quarter. T area 39, Yankton 35. It'll be an interesting fourth quarter, I guarantee you. Here's Vasika out front. Vasika with five seconds. In the lane, turnaround, good. Vasika with 14. After three quarters, though, T area 41, Yankton 35. The Gazelles with 24 points. In that third quarter, T. Area with 13, back with the fourth in one minute on Five Star Streaming from YouTube. Perfect night of sleep can be found with Slumberland Sleep Solution Center. Stearns and Foster, Tempur-Pedic, and Sealy all feature. Don't lose another night of sleep. Stop by Slumberland of Yankton. Looking to update the family room? Look no further than Yankton Slumberland. Lazy Boy. Flex Steel Furniture, and more. All at your hometown furniture store. That's Slumberland of Yankton. Boston Shoes to Boots is proud to carry the best brand names in the footwear industry. From tough work boots that are built to last, like Red Wing and Danner, to men's and women's dress shoes from well-known brands like Clark's and Dansko. Or if you're looking for casual and athletic styles, we carry Minnetonka and New Balance, to name a few. We are happy to help you get fitted into a quality pair of shoes. You can find all these brands and more at Boston Shoes to Boots, located on 3rd Street right off of Broadway in Yankton. A 24-13 run by Yankton, and Yankton got to within three. As T-Area has the ball to start the fourth quarter after the Gazelles were down 17 at the half, 28-11. to Here's Gores. Here's a jumper by Shupner short. Offensive rebound to Grant. Grant and called for traveling in the lane. Again, she had a big second quarter for T-Area with six points, but she travels here. Some backcourt pressure by T-Area. Beeman will drive up and lost the dribble. 
Gets it across the timeline to Eisnes in time. Left side to Savvy. Here is Fieser. Fieser to Salvatore. And Eisnes will get it in the corner to Savvy. Savvy driving in. Shot from the right side of the lane. Too strong. Rebound. A putback by Beeman. Blocked by Vasica. 41-35. T area. One minute gone. Fourth quarter on the Fox Stop scoreboard. Vasica. Left corner three by Gores. Good. Cassidy Gores with her third three of the game. She's in double figures with 12. And it's 44-35. And a double team. Nope. A timeout. Yankton. 32nd. Culligan Water Break. Brought to you by Culligan Water of Yankton. Think outside the bottle at 401 East 4th Street in Yankton. Again, Yankton. In that third quarter, Yankton got three points from Kate Beeman. A three from Jillian Eisnes. Eight from Molly Savvy with two threes. Eight from Claire Tereshinsky with two threes. And a bucket by Ellie Fieser. Yankton has only been to the free throw line twice where they're one out of two. As Kate Beeman completed a three-point play in the third quarter, Ellie Fieser missed hers. T area is six out of eight from the free throw line, including... Three for three this half. Again, the Yankton Bucks and the T-Area Titans coming up next here on Five Star Streaming from YouTube on Five Star Streaming tonight because of South Dakota men's and women's basketball on the stations of Five Star Communications. Inbounds pass from the far sideline to Tereshinsky. Left side to Savvy. Down low to Salvatore. Knocked away. Taken by Vasica. Vasica moving in from the right. The layup is no good. Rebound off the floor, last touched by Yankton. 44-35 T area, 6.37 left to go on the Fox Stop scoreboard. On the end line, it goes into Vasica outside the arc on the right. It'll go to McKinney. McKinney to Grant driving in, layup too strong. Rebound, tapped out to McKinney. A new shot clock for T-Area. High post to Shupner. Shupner almost had it taken away. Grant in the right corner. will take a dribble and give to Vasika. Vasika lost the ball. A steal by Claire Tereshinsky. Knocked away from behind by McKinney. Yankton basketball on the near sideline in their front court. Molly Savvy to throw it in. It goes into Tereshinsky. Claire out front, guarded by Gores, and now an illegal screen on Kate Beeman. The second time, Michael, she's been called for that tonight. That is her second, team's third. (laughs) All right. And coming back in for Yankton will be Drotsman for Kate Beeman. So from the near sideline, McKinney will get it in to Katie Vasica who leads all scorers with 14. She had five in the third quarter, nine in the first half. Vasica down low, and the ball taken away by Salvatore, intended for Shepner. Gazelles have done a good job of shutting that down. Here down low is Savvy, dribbles out to Eisnes. Tereshinsky out front. Tereshinsky guarded by Gores, gets a screen, backs up, jumper on the way, short. And the rebound to Mara Grant for T-Area. Nine-point lead for T-Area, 5.26 to go. In the front court, Vasica will have a very short Gazelle basketball postgame show brought to you by First Dakota National Bank. Left side, McKinney. Out front to Gores. Gores just dribbling around the front, goes to Vasica. Hits the ball near midcourt, 10 to shoot. Vasica on the drive. The layup is good. Vasica gives T area an 11 point lead. Now, T area on a 5 0 run. Gazelles haven't scored yet this quarter. And a foul on T area. Shepner will commit her first personal, third team foul. Beeman in. Savvy out for Yankton. Yankton needs that push. (laughs) 
Down now, four possessions, 11 points, 46-35, 4.45 left to go. Here's Claire Tereshinsky. Claire over to Drotsman in the corner, Salvatore to Eisnes to Drotsman, right side, Beeman. Beeman up on the right, hands it to Tereshinsky. Claire backs up, a three, good! Claire Tereshinsky with the first points of the fourth quarter for Yankton. She has four threes and 16 points. 46-38, Gazelles now need stops here in the midway point of the fourth quarter. Vasika, left side to Shupner. Shupner will give to McKinney, back to Shupner. Shupner driving on Eisness. Eisness is called for a foul. Eisness with her second, team's fourth. And on the end line, now T-Area wants a full timeout. Let's take it with them. 3.58 to go on a Culligan water break. Culligan water of Yankton. Think outside the bottle at 401 East 4th Street in Yankton. Back in one minute on five-star streaming from YouTube. Imagine working for a successful global business with customers in 140 countries. That's Fouché Intertechnology a Fortune 1000 maker of electronic componentry. Now imagine a company of that size with that kind of stability and also a caring, family-like environment. Learn more about what you can do at Bache by visiting www.bachecareers.com. Bache, the DNA of tech. You deserve to get good service and great rates. At State Farm, we get it, and we're here to help. Because with every State Farm policy, you get good neighbor service and surprisingly great rates. So what are you waiting for? Get going and talk to a local State Farm agent about your surprisingly great rates today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Individual premiums will vary by customer. All applicants subject to State Farm underwriting requirements. When you want the real deal, call State Farm agent Roy Wilcox in Yankton today. 3.58 to go. T area will inbound it up 46-38 on Yankton. 3.53 to go on the Fox Stop scoreboard. For T area, Cassidy Gores will bring it out and give to Katie Vasica, guarded by Macy Drotsman, and Macy hand checked her. Wow. Wow, that's a. And, and Trey Creer <laughs> going, what? Macy Drotsman <laughs> will commit her second, team's fifth. Well, they tell you, play defense with your feet, not with your hands. Yeah. Well, no, it's true. You know, you're supposed to do that, but that's not always the case. Out front, here's Vasika as Tierry got a new shot clock driving. Gets it in the corner to Grant. Free throw line jumper by Shupner is an air ball and the rebound to Eisness for Yankton. 46-38, Tierry, 318 to go. In the front court. Beeman to the left side, Drotsman to Tereshinsky, who's having a big second half. Claire out front to Eisness. Now to Beeman. Beeman to Eisness. Left side, driving in Tereshinsky. Baseline jumper, good! Claire Tereshinsky in the second half has 13 of her 18. 46 40. Gazelle's down two possessions with 2.45 to go on the Fox Stop scoreboard. Katie Vasica out front as T area just taking time off the clock. Vasica now driving and scores. Why is the trail official calling a foul? Oh gosh. Don McEnroy calls the foul. As Katie Vasika gets the bucket, goes to the line for a third time to try to complete a three-point play. Beeman with the foul, her third, team sixth. Vasika's free throw is good. She has 10 of her 19 in the second half, so that's her average, 19 and a half. And 49-40, T-area leads, 2.23 to go. Down low, Beeman, right side of the lane, double teamed. Here's Tereshinsky for three, left it short. And the rebound to Cassidy Gores, now to Katie Vasika. And now with a three possession lead and the ball, T area can afford to take some more time off the clock. Here's Vasika 
Vasika driving the lane. Down low to Shepner, mm. and the lay-in easy for two. She's in double figures with 11. Cassidy Gores has 12. Vasika has 19. Now a double-digit lead, 11, 51, 40, T area. 145 to go. Three by Tereshinsky is good. She has scored all eight points in this quarter for Yankton. She has 16 of her 21 in this half. Here is Mara Grant. Grant stopped out front. Will go to McKinney. And a travel on McKinney. Yankton down eight. Three possessions. 51-43. 122 to go. Back in for T area. Ray Stansbury. Yep, Claire Tereshinsky with a game high 21. So 51 43, Gazelles need to score fast. Down eight. Here's Isness, right side to Beeman. Beeman to the middle, and another. Illegal screen on Jillian Eisness. That's her third, team seven. No free throws will be shot because of a player control foul. On the near sideline, McKinney will get it in to Vasika. Fouled from behind by Savvy. Her third, team's eighth. Now, T area will go to the line with 108 to go. Vasika is three out of four from the line with 19 points. Beeman is in. Eisness is out. Jillian with a three this half. Front end is good by Vasika. That gives her 20, 52-43 T area with 108 to go. Back end is good. She's got 21. One and a half points more than her average. Salvatore tried to find Drotsman the pass too high off Macy's hands out of bounds. Gazelles with full court pressure with 102 to go, down 10. And that's four possessions. It goes into Vasika, to Shepner, to Grant. Grant will easily lay it in for two more. First bucket since the second quarter. She has eight, 55-43. Tereshinsky with 49 seconds in the front court. Claire, jumper inside the ring is short. Rebound to Grant. Rebound foul on Macy Drotsman. That's her third, team's ninth. One and one coming up for Grant, who is 19 of 31 from the free throw line, 61% coming in. And has a chance to get into double figures with a couple free throws here. Bryn Schuppner has 11. Cassidy Gores with 12. Katie Vasika has 21. Front end, good. She'll earn the bonus with her ninth point. 56-43 T area, 43.4 to go. The bonus, no good. And a foul on the rebound on T area. And it's on Kendra McKinney. No, it's on Schepner. That is her second, team's fourth. Full court pressure by T area. It goes into Tereshinsky with McKinney on her. Tereshinsky to Savvy to Salvatore driving in. The layup is good. And a timeout wanted by Yankton. They got to take a full. They have no more 30s. We'll be back. At- is everything. This is Paul Wentz of the Winston Ray Funeral Home and Cremation Service in Yankton. Our family has been serving and helping families create memorable funeral experiences for nearly 75 years. You can put your trust in our experience and our guiding principle that we don't look at funeral service as just a job, but rather a way of life, an important ministry that our family is proud to provide. And we are thankful our reputation is one you can count on. Winston Ray Funeral Home, Yankton. Okay, Bucks fans, it's that time again. Time to bank some noise for this game break with First Dakota National Bank. Give me a B for this much-needed bathroom break. Squeal with delight because your eight-hour pork ribs are ready. 
throw your hands in the air because you've been sitting a while and need to stretch. Bank some noise with us at First Dakota. Open a new account online today at firstdakota.com, member FDIC. 32.9 left to go. Shot clock is off. Key area is going to come away with the win. But the Gazelles down 28 to 11 at the half. Had a 24 to 13 run in the third quarter. Had it to within three for a second time. But T area has slowly pulled away again here in the fourth quarter. Full court pressure. It goes into Vasica. Fouled by Jordan Salvatore with 31.6 to play. So Jordan Salvatore with her third, team's tenth, double bonus now for Katie Vasica, who is five out of six from the line, now shooting in the double bonus, and leads three in double figures for T area with 21 points. First of two is good. 57-45, T area, 31.6 left to go. The second... Too strong. Rebound to Beeman. What, a free throw line violation? Or a free throw lane violation on Yankton? That's the first time I've seen that this year. Thanks, Donnie Kaiser. (laughs) So, Grant, or I'm sorry, Vasika will get another chance at it. She missed that one. Rebound knocked off the floor. It'll be T-Area basketball, I think. (laughs) Jim Haskamp's not being clear, but T-Area's taking it out. Inbounds pass to Vasica being chased by Salvatore. And now T-Area can pretty much run out the clock. Yep. Now 18 seconds to play. The final score will read T-Area 57 Yankton 45. Thierry with 16 points in the fourth quarter to Yankton's 10. And now the last three seconds are going out. And the final, Thierry 57, Yankton 45. Thierry now 11 and 8. The Gazelles 5 and 12. First ever meeting between the two squads. Here is the first Dakota National Bank Gazelle basketball postgame show brought to you by First Dakota National Bank, proud of our accomplishments in the communities we serve. Scoring for T-Area, Bryn Shupner had 11, Kendra McKinney with 3, Cassidy Gores had 12, Katie Vasica had 22, and Mara Grant had 9. For Yankton, Jordan Salvatore with 6, Kate Beeman with 3, Jillian Eisnes with 3, Molly Savvy had 10. Claire Tereshinsky had 16 of her 21 points in the second half. Ellie Fieser scored two. Next up for T-Area at Elk Point Jefferson tomorrow night. Next up for Yankton, ESD girls action against Brookings at home Tuesday night. And we'll have that game for you on Classic Hits 106.3, kbhtradio.com, and on five-star streaming from YouTube. Now, let's transition into Yankton High School Boys Basketball presented by FNBO, First National Bank Omaha. With full-service banking, mortgage, ag, commercial, small business, free checking, savings, and credit cards, your great big small bank, FNBO. It's the T-Area Titans, 11-6, 8-1 in the Dakota 12 Conference, receiving votes in Class A boys in the South Dakota Prep Media Basketball Poll. Against the Yankton Bucks on senior night. The Bucks 9 and 7, 4 and 3 in the ESD. T area is coached by Drew Weber, who's in his third year, a graduate of Nebraska Lincoln, assisted by Keith Cutler, Jordan Rausch, and Clay Robinson. And Coach Weber and I sat down earlier to talk about the Titans and the first ever matchup with the Yankton Bucks. Coach Weber, thanks for joining us on the Buck Basketball pregame show, 11 and 6. 8-1 and one in the DAC-12 conference. Talk about the Titans' season up to this point. You know, it's been a pretty good year. Um, we play a, a very difficult schedule, uh, especially the second half of the season. We're playing we're playing a top team every night. And we played a lot of different styles, a lot of different uh, 
types of teams. Um, we've adjusted well, I think, uh, for the most part. Um, we've, we've lost some game. I mean, we're 11 and 6. I don't know if that's necessarily indicative of the type of team that we have, but the losses that we've had have been to some really, really good teams, and we've beaten some really good teams. Our, our focus is always on winning those region games. Um, we feel like our region 4A is as good a region and class yeah. A is any region, uh, and it, and it's proven to be, uh, so, and, and we're just really battling in there to try to get a home, uh, you know, a home seed. I'm trying to avoid, uh, Dakota Valley, <laughs> you know, trying to be a two or three seed, just like everybody else is <laughs> in our region. So, um, currently we feel like we're going to, we're in a pretty good spot, but we have some work to be done here towards the end of the season. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, and of course, when we talk about your team, uh, well, a lot runs through, uh, your fine, uh, senior guard, Kale Lundeen. Yeah, uh, Kale's as good as anybody. He's a three-year starter. Uh, he's been an All-Stater the last two seasons. I'd anticipate uh, him getting in there again uh, this year. Uh, he does a lot for us, um, uh, both offensively and defensively, and, and probably more than anything this season that we feel like he's improved over the last two seasons has been his rebounding. Um, he's always been a good rebounder, a guy about four a game, but he's been up around seven for us, which has been key. Uh, you know, a lot of the teams that we play, the perimeter players are 6'3", 6'4", 6'5", you know, not just the bigs, uh, have that length. And, and so we, and we don't necessarily have that. We have some good size on the block, but not really on the perimeter and haven't the last few years. So we needed some wing players to step up and rebound this year. And he's done that along with doing all the other stuff he does for us as well. But, uh, um, he's a well-rounded guard and, and we feel like, uh, uh, he's as good as just about anybody out there. And uh, his support cast isn't too bad either, isn't it? Yeah, and uh, and they've been playing a lot better recently. And, and that's, that's made things a lot easier on, on Kale and made things a lot easier on everybody. Jeff Worth, another three-year starter, uh, been an all-conference guy. Uh, he's right around 15 a game, uh, one of the better shooters in South Dakota. And he's really developed a more of a... Uh, a game where he can score at all three levels that he's kind of lacked the last two seasons. And, and he does a lot for us there. Um, and then Reese Kirshenman's our big down, down on the block starter that we were really high on coming into this season. He played a lot last year as a sophomore. Um, first start of the season, he did a lot for us defensively and rebounding like he always does, but it just wasn't very efficient offensively that we knew that he was capable of. And about game 10 or so, he, against Sioux Falls Christian, he really, had a nice, I think he had about 20 and 12 uh, that night, and since then we've been off and running with him there. And then he gets some support and behind him and Clayton Sattler that we feel like when we play those two um, that we're going to get about 20, 20 and 12 or 20 and 15 a night. And, and when we can do that, when those two can play well um, at the block, that really opens things up for our perimeter guys. All right, I know uh, you're in the middle of a busy week. Uh, Brandon Valley on Tuesday Yankton tonight, and then Elk Point Jefferson coming up uh, on Friday night. But talk about the Bucks if you've seen them on film. Yeah, they're a very athletic team. Um, similar to Brandon, you know, we played Brandon on Tuesday. They have a little more length uh, than Yankton does. That, that caused us a little uh, problems. Uh, offensively, we kind of struggled against their length and couldn't make some shots. Uh, and then now we play Yankton, knowing that that same – physicality is going to be there but uh, Yankton's group's a little quicker a little more skilled uh, there especially in the backcourt so um, you know slowing down the uh, Riken and, and Prouty will be key you know doing the best that we can there but we need to really do the things that we do well uh, tonight and that's uh, uh, utilize all three levels get the ball into the block and, and really rebound well we feel like that's going to be an opportunity for us to maybe have a little bit of an advantage uh, but we got to match the physicality play of these double-A games, and, and we like that uh, that too. But we're going to have to uh, play a little better than we did Tuesday, and, and if we do that, we feel like we got an opportunity to get a nice, solid win tonight. All right, Coach Weber, again, thanks for joining us on the Buck Basketball pregame show. Absolutely. Thanks, Joe. Drew Weber on the Buck Basketball pregame show brought to you by the Yankton Medical Clinic. So much care, so close to home. Let's transition now into our pregame interview with Yankton coach Chris Haynes, who's in his 10th year, a graduate of Dakota Wesleyan University, assisted by Jason Savvy, Matt Decker, and Sawyer Schmitz. Well, Coach Haynes, building off uh, last Friday night and Saturday afternoon, 
heading into, uh, well, a Class A team that uh, has done pretty good so far this season, T area. Yeah, T's as good as anyone in the state. You know, they've um, played right. They played a lot of double-A schools this year, played right with them and beat a couple. So, um, like I said, if they were double-A right now, they would be uh, just as good as anyone. And you know, It's going to be a, a very tough game, and uh, we're going to have to play play very well to have a chance to, to come out with a victory. And uh, certainly they have uh, an offense going through one player. Yeah, uh, you know, they got a, a point guard and quarterback, one of those point guard quarterback athletes that we talked so much this year about, it seems like throughout the state. And Cole Lundin is, is you know, he's good as a, a Keen Holtz or an Ashley or a Norberg, anything like that um, on the football field and on the basketball court. Yeah, but the thing is, his supporting cast is really good too. Um, you know, he's got they got other guards around him. The worst kid can really shoot it, and then inside they got you know three, four really big kids that uh, can get a lot done. So they're uh, the reason why they're so good is obviously they have him who can take over a game. You know, he got 38 against O'Gorman. He had 41 here uh, the other week, so he can take over a game. But then they have other guys on the perimeter that can shoot, as well as big guys inside that can score and and rebound so uh, they're a complete inside outside team all right what kind of defense will you see from them tonight they mix it up but everything they do is aggressive on the ball um so majority of it is still man-to-man but they really get after you and put a lot of ball pressure on they'll run some two three zone where they really extend it and again uh, even in the zone kind of unique how much pressure they put on the ball and then every once in a while they'll throw in uh, three-quarter court press or, or half-court trap. So you really have to be ready for everything against these guys. And tonight is uh, senior night as it's the uh, regular season finale at home for the Bucks. Yeah, obviously Jaden, Dylan, and Colton um, have, have done a great job for us throughout their career and especially this year. And, uh, you know, we just appreciate all the hard work and time and commitment that they've had to our program. And um, you know, hopefully they, all three of them can play well tonight and, and finish their careers here with a good end of the regular season and end of the postseason. Go Chains, appreciate the visit. Go get them. We'll see you in the post game. Okay, thanks, y'all. Yankton coach Chris Haynes on the Buck Basketball pregame show brought to you by the Yankton Medical Clinic. So much care, so close to home. In this week's Class AA poll in the South Dakota Prep Media Basketball Poll, Sioux Falls Roosevelt, the unanimous number one, O'Gorman second, Sioux Falls Jefferson third, Mitchell fourth, and Aberdeen Central fifth, with Sioux Falls Lincoln, Sioux Falls Washington, and Harrisburg receiving votes. Again, T area receiving votes in Class A in that prep media basketball poll. T area among the double A schools that they played lost to O'Gorman 65 to 64. Defeated Aberdeen Central 54-51. And lost to Brandon Valley earlier this week, 58-49. to So, as we mentioned, Michael, these guys are legit. Yeah, they really are. Um, you know, they can play with, as evidenced by that O'Gorman score, they can play with the best. Um, and so uh, the Bucks have to uh, be on their game tonight. So hopefully they can. Again, hopefully they have the emotion from the senior night, uh, and Jaden's out there, and hopefully Dylan can be hitting his threes. And, but uh, it, it, it'll be a, it'll be a good game. I don't think they can take him just because they're an A team lightly. All right, T area as a team averaging 63 points while giving up 57, shooting 47 percent from the floor, 39 percent for their opponents. T area, 37% from three, 36% for their opponents. Jeff Wirth has 48 threes on the season for T area. Kale Lundin with 24, Jonah Kosher with 23, and Sam Elmas off the bench has 12. T area from the free throw line, 61%, 68% for their opponents. And T area, a rebound their opponents by five, 33 to 28. Kale Lundin averages 20.2 points per game to lead T area. Jeff Worth at 14.1. Reese Kirschman averages 8.9 rebounds a game. Kale Lundin 6.6. Lundin leads an assist with 63, but Kosher has 57 in block shots. Clayton Sattler off the bench has 28, while Reese Kirschman has 20. 
and in steals, Kale Lundeen has 36. Yankton is averaging 53 points a game, shooting 42% from the floor, 33% from three, 68% from the free throw line, averaging 28 rebounds, 12 assists, seven steals, one block shot, and almost 10 turnovers per game. Two and double figures leads Yankton. Senior Jaden Crawl at 12.4 points per game. Junior Rugby Riken at 10.3. Crawl leads the Bucks in rebounding at 5.7 boards a game. Or correction, Rugby Riken leads in rebounding at 5.7 boards a game. Jaden Crawl right behind at 5.6. In assist, Rugby Riken averages five a game. On defense, Mac Riken averages two steals. And Jaden Crawl averages... One block shot a game for Yankton. On the Fox Stop scoreboard in the JV game, Yankton defeated T area 64 to 59. Uh, didn't catch the sophomore score. If anybody knows it, <laughs> give me a text. <laughs> Coming up, we'll have tonight's starting lineups and the opening tip off. Yankton 9 and 7 against T area 11 and 6. Again, T area receiving votes in Class Bay in the South Dakota Prep Media Basketball Poll. We'll be back after this two minute timeout here on Five Star Streaming from YouTube. Shopping for the perfect fit couldn't be any easier than shopping at Night Street Clothing. Top end fashions from the best brands in jeans, loungewear, jackets, and more. Night Street Clothing also has men's fashion, including tank tops, t shirts, and shoes, and can also rent tuxes. Can't make it to the store? Shop with ease online at 9thStreetClothing.com. Fashion, accessories, and gift cards all at 9th Street Clothing. This is your invitation to thrive in Yankton, South Dakota. Nestled on the bluffs of the Missouri River, plenty of outdoor adventures are waiting. Whether you work remote or in a traditional office, we have a spot for you. Quality health care diverse manufacturing, progressive school system, Mount Marty University, and so much more. Explore with family and friends. Let's thrive together. Heating and cooling values reliability as much as you do. That's why Kaiser Heating and Cooling creates and maintains their own products. They have the skills to create and help solve any problems that may come up. Kaiser Heating and Cooling also has heat and glow and Dimplex fireplaces. Give Kaiser Heating and Cooling a call today, proudly serving the Yankton area since 1948. At Elwood Family Dental Care, we see patients from 1 to 101. Come experience our gentle touch while you relax in our massage chairs and watch TV. Patients are loving our new digital scanner. No more ooey, gooey, gaggy impressions. We'd love to meet you, and we're always accepting new patients. Call 665-2530 to make an appointment. Ella Family Dental Care, where we take care of the entire family. All right, well... Just like for the Gazelles Lady Titans game, the Bucks Titans game is featuring senior night for Yankton as the Bucks will recognize 6'5 senior Jaden Crawl, 6'4 senior Colton Potts, and 6'0 senior Dylan Prouty, along with the sideline cheer seniors that have been cheering on the Bucks and the Gazelles all season long. Let's bring you tonight's starting lineups. First of all, for the T-Area Titans, again 11 and 6. At a forward, Alex Pies, a 6'3 senior. The center, Reese Kirschman, a 6'4 junior. And the three-guard set of Jonah Kosher, a 6'1 junior. Kale Lundeen, the stud, a 6'3 senior. And Jeff Wirth, a 5'11 senior. Expect to see Jackson Weber, a 5'11 senior. Clayton Sadler, a 6'6 senior. Cole Schilling, a 6'7 senior. And Sam Almas, a 6'2 sophomore, off the bench first for T-Area. For the Yankton Bucks, at a forward, Jaden Crawl, 6'5", senior. Colton Potts at center, getting the start as a senior at 6 feet 4 inches. And the three-guard set of Mac Riken, a 5'10", junior. Rugby Riken, a 6'0", junior. And Dylan Prouty, a 6'0", senior. 
expect to see Drew Reichen, a 5'10 junior. Cody Oswald, a 6'3 junior. Isaiah Skelhaas, a 6'1 junior. And Michael Moores, a 6'5 junior, off the bench first for Yankton. T area in their road, uh, road dark blue, trimmed out in gold and in white. The Bucks in their home white, trimmed out in red and in black. Our officials, and it's an all-star crew tonight, folks. Our referee is Chris Janis, and the umpires are Jim Jocko Johnston and Lee Studmuffin Johnson. I can call Jocko and Studmuffin that because I know them both very, very well. And that is the Buck Basketball pregame show brought to you by the Yankton Medical Clinic. The Yankton Medical Clinic, so much care, so close to home. If you weren't with us for the Gazelles game, T area held off the Gazelles 57 to 45. Katie Vasika had 22 points to lead T area. Cassidy Gores had 12. Bryn Shepner had 11. As T area goes to 11 and 8. For Yankton now 5 and 12. Claire Tereshinsky had 21 points, 16 in the second half. And Molly Savvy has 10. As the Gazelles down 28 to 11 at halftime, had a 24 to 13 run in the third quarter, but T area pulled away in that uh, third quarter. As Michael, well, there is some promise for the Gazelles. Like we said, uh, Sioux Falls Christian throttled them Tuesday night, six, uh, 67 to 41. But I think the Gazelles have a little juice off of what they saw in the second half going into next week. Oh, definitely, definitely. They, uh, they can feel pretty good, and Claire uh, Claire just seemed to get more and more confident with their shot. If Molly's coming along like she uh, she has been the last four or five games, uh, no, the Gazelles have a lot to uh, a lot to hang their hats on as we head into the close of the regular season into the Sodak 16. So it'll be interesting to see how they do. All right. T area getting around the circle. The Yankton Bucks joining them there. And Jaden Crawl will jump against Reese Kershman. So Chris Janis in the middle, and the tap is controlled by, well, nobody. It goes out of bounds. It'll belong to Yankton as Reese Kershman knocked it out of bounds. So on the far sideline in front of the T area bench, Rugby Riken will throw it in with two seconds gone in the game. Rugby looking will get it in to Mac Riken now to Rugby. T area will start man to man. Here is Dylan Prouty to Mac Riken to Prouty steps inside the ring. Here is Rugby Riken down low to Potts. Potts can't find anything. Here's Crawl out front to Mac Riken. 15 to shoot for the Bucks, moving right to left here in the first half. Here's Rugby Riken with 10 to shoot, backing down. Here is a long three by Prouty. Off the back of the rim, no good, and the rebound cleared by Kale Lundeen of T area. Again, he's had some games in the 30s. This kid is good. Here is Jonah Kosher. Over to Alex Pease. Down low to Kirschman. Kicks it over to the left. A three by Kosher is good. Jonah Kosher with his 24-3 of the season. T area with an early 3-0 lead on their first possession. One minute gone in the first quarter on the Fox Stop scoreboard. Here's Rugby to Mac Riken. He will take the open three and miss it. Rebound, Reese Kershman to Lundeen. Up ahead to Pease. Here's a deflected pass out of bounds by Mac Riken as Jonah Kosher was trying to get it over to the left corner. On the end line, Jeff Worth will play it in. 3-0 T area. 643 left to go in the first quarter. Worth still looking. Gets it way out front to Kosher. Right corner to Lundeen. Lundeen up on the right. Down low to Kershman. Lay in no good. Gets his own rebound back and scores. It's 5-0 T area. 6.30 left to go first quarter on the Fox Stop scoreboard. For Yankton, Rugby Riken into the front court. Rugby will hand it off to Mack Riken. 
Mack stays on the right, looking for Rugby. Will shovel it to Rugby. Rugby in the lane, fade away, good, and Yankton's on the board, trailing 5-2. to two. With 6.09 left to go, first quarter on the Fox Stop scoreboard. For T area, Pease to Worth, and an offensive foul, or a, well, an illegal block on Alex Pease, his first, team's first. So Yankton down 5-2 to two with the basketball. Six minutes to go, first quarter on the Fox Stop scoreboard. Here is Prouty. Down low to Crawl. Crawl inside. Turn around. Good. Jaden Crawl makes it 5-4. Bucks on a 4-0 run after trailing 5-0 early. 5.45 left to go in the first. Lundeen. Right side of the lane over Rugby Reichen short. Rebound to Kirschman. Up no good. Gets it back. Shot blocked by Crawl. Back the other way comes Reichen. Rugby Reichen. Left corner. Mack for a three. It's good. Mack Reichen is the third buck starter to score. Yankton now on a 7-0 run to lead 7-5. Lundeen. Here's a three left side by Worth. It's too strong. Rebound. Tip to Colton Potts. That three by Mack Reichen, his ninth of the season. Rugby in the lane. Layup too strong. Rebound to Alex Pease. Up ahead to Lundeen. Lost the ball. Saved by Prouty. And T area has it. A deflected pass, knocked out of bounds by Jaden Crawl. Yankton on a 7-0 run, leading 7-5. 4.57 left to go first quarter. Worth on the end line for T area. Into Pease. Pease to Lundin. Right side to Kosher, who has a three in the game. Yankton and T area playing man-to-man. Here's a ball inside kick by Yankton. 15 on the shot clock for T area as Worth will inbound it on the end line. He'll lob it in to Kirschman on the high post. Here's Pease. Right side, a three on the way. It's short by Kosher in the rebound to Yankton. Here's Mac Reichen. Mac, left side, Prouty. An open three on the way. Too strong. Rebound knocked off the floor by Crawl. It'll belong to T area. But Yankton still on a 7-0 run, leading 7-5 on the Fox Stop scoreboard. 4.28 left to go, first quarter. For T area, Kosher in the front court. Kosher to the right outside the arc. Goes to Lundeen. Lundeen, left side of the lane jumper is good. That breaks the Yankton 7-0 run. Lundeen is the third Titans starter to score, tied at 7 we got a bunch of reserves at the table at the next dead ball. For Yankton, Mack Reichen, down below to Crawl. Crawl in the lane, left side to Prouty. Kicks it to Reichen, now to Rugby Reichen, with under four to go in the first quarter. Rugby, trying to wheel and deal in the lane. A little scoop shot is no good. Rebound to Kirschman, up ahead to Worth. Worth, knocked away by Mack Reichen, taken by Lundin, who got away with a walk. Here's a three, left corner, that will rattle in for Alex Pease. Alex Pease with only his second three-pointer of the season. And now a 5 nothing run or 4 nothing run by T area. Here's Colton Potts with an air ball from beyond the free throw line. As Yankton will bring in Cody Oswald, the 6'3 junior. Michael Morris, the 6'5 junior, and Drew Riken, the 5'10 junior. T area with some changes. In is Cole Schilling, a 6'7 senior, and Clayton Sadler, a 6'6 senior. Here's Lundin out front. Worth with a quick three, missed everything. Rebound to Cody Oswald, picked up by Rugby Riken. 9'7 in favor of T area. With 2.58 left to go, first quarter. After getting out to a 5-0 lead. Here on the left side, Riken Rugby driving in. Right side, crawl for a three. It might have been tipped by Worth. Dug out by Lundin. Up ahead, it'll go to Kosher. Kosher to Worth. 9-7 T area. One of their threes must have been a two. Here's a runner by Worth, no good. Rebound, Cody Oswald. Back the other way come the Bucks. 
Left side, Drew Riken driving in. Drew stopped on the block. Double teamed. We'll throw it away. Coming in for T area, Sam Almas, a 6'2 sophomore. So let me check here. Okay, that three by Pease was only a two. So that's why it's 9 7. Great Yankton High School map, huh? <laughs> Out front, Almas to Lundeen. Lundeen a pull up three, short. Offensive rebound, knocked away, taken by Rugby Reichen over to Crawl. Crawl, right side of the lane, jumper off the glass, too strong. A tip up by Michael Morse, no good. The ball saved by Drew Reichen on a great play for Yankton. Here's Oswald in the lane. Oswald, fade away, no good. Rebound to Sadler for T area. T area on a 4 0 run after Yankton had a 7 0 run. 9 7 Titans. 138 left to go first quarter. Here's Almas to Worth to Lundeen on the left. Lundeen will pull up from inside the arc and it's short. Rebound to Sadler. Back to Lundeen. Lundeen drives in the lane. Kicks it out front to Worth. Goes to Sadler. Pass too high taken by Crawl of Yankton. And a 30 second timeout wanted by Yankton. It's a 30 second Culligan water break, Michael. Brought to you by Culligan Water of Yankton. Think outside the bottle at 401 East 4th Street. Uh, the Bucks need to just settle down just a little bit. You know, they're getting themselves caught. You know, Drew Reich and getting caught under the basket. Jaden just not taking it into the basket. They've had some open shots. They just seem to be a little, little too excited today. Uh, so I think if they can settle down, they're going to be okay. Uh, of course, T's missing quite a few, a few of their shots as well. So yep. we'll see how this turns out. And, you know, we really haven't talked about these two teams meeting in football for the first time in the Class 11 AA semifinals. That T area had to hang on on the last play by Yankton to win to go to the championship game where Pier won their, what, fifth 11 AA title in a row. (laughs) And, yep, they will have Lincoln Keenholz back at quarterback next year. I hear hear he's good. uh, Unless he uh, transfers into college right away, we don't know. After the timeout, Yankton basketball trailing 9-7. to seven. Left side, rug, uh, Rugby Riken. Drew Riken, a pull-up three, doesn't fall. And the rebound to Kale Lundeen for T-Area. Under a minute to go. T-Area still on a 4 nothing run. Lundeen across the timeline. Mac Riken almost got a steal. But he knocked it out of bounds in front of the T-Area coaches on the far sideline. Jeff Worth will play it in. To Kale Lundeen. 48 seconds left in the quarter. 9 7 T area on the Fox Stop scoreboard. Lundeen, great pass to Worth and the layup good. All five T area starters have scored now. T area on a 6 0 run. About a second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. T area on a 6 0 run, leading Yankton 11 7. Thierry got out to a 5-0 lead. Then Yankton went on a 7-0 run to lead 7-5. Now, 16-15. Rugby Riken to Drew Riken. Drew will cross-court it to Mac Riken with 5 to shoot. Here's Drew. Long 3. No good. Rebound to Sadler to Lundeen. Lundeen from half court. It's got a chance and it's good! Kale Lundeen! with a three at the buzzer. T area 14, Yankton 7 on the Fox Stop scoreboard. We'll be back in one minute on Five Star Streaming from YouTube. Piper, the sign says it all. Flowers and gifts. The store is bustling with something new all the time. There are flowers for any occasion, weddings, anniversary, birthday, or just to say I love you. There's coffee, soups, dips, and sweets. Need to give someone a chuckle? The socks say it all. Home decor, candles, jewelry, memorial items are all found at your gift store of Pied Piper Flowers and Gifts, corner of 15th and Broadway in Yankton. You can also shop online, and best of all, we deliver too. Wow, half-court three-pointer by Kale Lundeen. And 
T area currently on a 9 nothing run. They led 5 nothing before Yankton went on a 7 nothing run. And now T area on a 9 nothing run to lead 14 to 7 after one quarter on the Fox Stop scoreboard. Kale Lundeen, he's a player. As Jeff Worth here on the near sideline will get it in for T area. Bucks haven't scored in a long time in the front court. Here's Worth, gets a screen from Kershaman. Here at the free throw line, a shot up and good by Jonah Kosher. He started the game with a three. He starts the second quarter with a bucket. It's now an 11-0 run by T area, leading Yankton 16-7. 7.38 left to go, first half on the Fox Stop scoreboard. Here's Rugby Riken. Rugby in the lane. Out front to Prouty. Thought about the three. He's being guarded by Lundeen. Here's Mack Riken to Rugby. Rugby will back on out and reset with 10 to shoot. Here left corner. Prouty for a three. It's no good. Rebound to Crawl. And the kick out to Mack Riken. Here's Rugby. He's got an open three and missed it. Rebound. Lundeen tipped to Kershman. Up ahead to Sadler. And Sadler is fouled by Mack Riken. His first, team's first. So each team has one team foul. But the Bucks' offense has gone cold. T area on an 11-0 run leading 16-7. to Seven minutes to go first half on the Fox Stop scoreboard. Here left side, Lundin, an open three. Too strong, rebound Cody Oswald to Jaden Crawl. Three on three, break, it goes to Riken. Reverse layup, no good. Follow up by Crawl is good. That breaks a T area, 11 to nothing run. 16 to nine, T area. Lundin at midcourt to Kosher. Left side, Worth for a three. It rims out. Rebound, knocked off the floor by Jaden Crawl. It'll belong to Sadler. Coming back in for T area, Alex Pease, who had a bucket. In the first half, Clayton Sadler will come out. He goes into Lundin to Pease. Worth will take an open three and missed it. And the rebound off the floor, it was last touched by Alex Pease. It was rolling off of <laughs> Jaden Crawl, but Pease was standing there out of bounds. That's why Yankton has the ball. Down 16 to 9, 619 left to go first half on the Fox Stop scoreboard. Here is Prouty. Prouty to Rugby Riken. Riken trying to wheel and deal on the right baseline. Gets it to Prouty. Now to Mac Riken to crawl. A pull up three. No good. Yankton has just one three. A foul in the backcourt on Yankton. No. A tie up. And it goes to Yankton on the change of possession. I thought the way Jocko Johnson was raising his hand, he was calling a foul. Rugby Riken on the end line to throw it in for Yankton. Gets it in right side to crawl to Mack Riken out front. Mack, pull up jumper, high post right side, won't fall. Offensive rebound to Rugby. Here's Prouty for a three. No good. Bucks continue cold. Down 16-9. to nine. 5.45 5.45 left to go first half on the Fox Stop scoreboard. Here's Pease driving on Crawl in the lane. Lost the ball out of bounds. It'll go to Yankton. And that draws a measured response from the T area crowd. <laughs> 16 to 9. T area over Yankton. 5.31 left to go. Each team with only a bucket here in the second quarter. Rugby Riken will walk it across the timeline right down the middle. Rugby, looking back door, hands it off to Crawl. Crawl, down low against Kershaman. Jump hook, good! Jaden Crawl with six. And now the Bucks trail by five with 5.12 left to go first half on the Fox Stop scoreboard. Kershaman down low, guarded by Colton Potts. Left side, here's Lundeen. Trying to get away from Rugby Riken to Kosher. Kosher to Lundin. Lundin now with 10 to shoot. Left corner three by Kosher. No good. Rebound Mack Riken. 
4.45 left in the half. 16 to 11 T area. Here's Mack in the lane. Left corner of Prouty for a three. No good. The rebound to Kirschman. Up ahead to Lundeen. Lundeen pull up three from the left. Too strong. Rebound. Rugby Riken. 16-11 T area. 4.25 left in the half. Mack Riken for three. Left corner. Too strong. Bucks are trying. They're getting looks. They're just not falling. As Kosher will bring it across the timeline for T area. Halfway through the second. 16-11. Here's a backdoor play to Lundeen. Fouled from behind by Mack Riken. His second. Team second. Lundeen, who hit a half-court three-pointer at the buzzer to end the first quarter. First free throws for either team. Lundeen, 79 of 107 for 73%. First of two is good. That ends a little Yankton run. Michael Moore's in for Rugby Riken. Almost back in for T area. Also in for the first, well, back in is Schilling. And Clayton Sattler will come in. 17 to 11. T area. Lundeen now with six points has another free throw coming. And here it is. It rattles in. He's got seven. And it's 18 to 11. So with Rugby Riken off the floor, Mac Riken will run the offense. Both teams still playing man to man defense. Here's Mac Riken stopped by Kosher. Hands it off to Crawl. Crawl had the ball knocked away. There is Prouty. It goes to Mack on the right. Mack in the lane. Left corner, Crawl. Crawl driving in. Goes down low to Potts. Off his leg and out of bounds to T area with a seven-point lead with 3.34 left to go. First half on the Fox Stop scoreboard. Kind of like an ESD boys basketball score, huh, folks? Into the front court, Kosher. Kosher stopped. Goes to Schilling. Jumper no good. Rebound to Crawl as he had Sadler boxed out. Crawl the other way. Goes to Michael Moores. Moores will go to Prouty. Michael was in double figures against Rapid City Central on Saturday. Here driving is Mac Riken. Scoop layup is short, but he was decked. And will go to the line for a pair. First free throws for Yankton tonight. Follows on Clayton Schilling, his first, team second. Mac Riken with a three, shooting two. Mac on the season, a 57% free throw shooter, hits the first of two. Again, the first free throws for Yankton. Worth back in. Oswald back in for Yankton. So on the floor for Yankton, Drew Riken is back in. Michael Moores, Jaden Crawl, Cody Oswald, and at the line, Mac Riken for the second of two. That's no good. And Sadler with the rebound for T area. 18 to 12 T area, 3.07 left to go, first half on the Fox Stop scoreboard. Here's Kale Lundeen driving, stopped in the lane, throws it away. Crawl with the interception, back the other way. Crawl, Drew Riken for three, good! Drew Riken with the first bench points for either team. Drew now, Michael, with 36. 36, okay. 18 11. And a timeout wanted by T area. A 30-second Culligan water break by Drew Weber of T-Area. Culligan water of Yankton. Think outside the bottle at 401 East 4th Street. Michael, I think I thought you woke up screaming knowing how many threes <laughs> Drew Riken has on the season. I thought it was going to be 36, but then I, I doubted myself. Yep, okay. I need to learn I'm not wrong often. So. Gotcha. <laughs> Now if we can just get Dylan Prouty to hit one and get his confidence going. Yeah, uh, tell you what, it's been uh, few and far between. Mac Riken's got a three. Drew Riken just hit a three to bring the Bucks to within three. 18-15 with 2.43 left to go on the Fox Stop scoreboard in the first half. And let's see, on the near sideline, Lundeen will throw it in to Jeff Wirth. Over to Schilling to Almas driving in. Almas loses the ball. Taken by Mac Riken. One on 
or two on one break. Mack goes to the rack, scores and was fouled. And will go to the line to try to complete the three-point play. And he can tie it up completing a three-point play. Jeff Worth with the foul, his first, team's third. Yankton after trailing, 14-7 to after one, a chance to tie with 2.33 left in the half on the Fox Stop scoreboard. Mack, one out of two from the line. The free throw to tie, it's good. He's got seven, tied at 18. The Bucks in the second quarter have an 11-4 run going. Here right side, Kale Lundeen. Down low to Kirschman, knocked away by Cody Oswald, taken by Mack Riken. Bucks with a chance for their second lead when it was 7-5 on a 7-0 run in the first quarter. Here's Crawl. Down low, baseline jumper Michael Moores won't fall. And a foul on the rebound on Cody Oswald, his first, team's third. Each team with three team fouls tied at 18. 2.08 left to go first half on the Fox Stop scoreboard. Yankton with a little backcourt pressure. Kale Lundeen will, or I'm sorry, it was Pease that got it into Lundeen. Lundeen across the timeline, and the ball kicked by either Mac Riken or Michael Moore's T basketball on the far sideline in front of the scorer's table. 18 all, 159 left to go first half on the Fox Top scoreboard. Here is Worth. Worth over to the left to Pease. Pease. Pease gets the pass back outside the arc, goes to Lundeen, 10 to shoot for T area. Here is Pease driving in, leaves it down low for Kershaman, and he'll score. Reese Kershaman makes it 20 to 18, T area. 133 left to go first half on the Fox Stop scoreboard. Here's Mac Riken. Right corner to Drew Riken. To Mac out front. Right side to Drew. Looking inside for Crawl. Can't find him right now. Now down low to Crawl. Posted up on Pease. Down low to Cody Oswald who gets free but misses a bunny. And the rebound to Worth. Up ahead to Lundeen. With 107 left to go on the half. T area by two. Here's Worth. To Lundeen, trying to wheel and deal on Michael Morris. Drives in the lane, lost the ball, and Cody Oswald saves it for Jaden Crowell. Crowell will bring it into the front court to Drew Riken. A pull up three, no good. Rebound to Michael Moore, shot blocked. Michael gets it back. Inside is fouled, no call, but Yankton gets the offensive board. Mack Riken to the rack, too strong. Rebound to Michael Moore's, fouled by Kale Lundeen with 36.5 left in the half. I guess the third time's the charm. I guess. Lundeen with his first personal. Fourth team foul. Michael Moore's at the line. On the season, a 33% free throw shooter. Well, Michael, here's a chance to improve your average. Exactly. First of two. Good. There we go. 20-19 20-19 T area. Pease with two points is out. Sam Almas is back in. Mac Riken with seven points to lead Yankton comes out. Jaden Kral has six. So Michael Moore is looking to tie it with 36.5 left in the half. And that one is short. The rebound to Kale Lundeen. Double teamed. We'll get it to Kosher. Kosher across the timeline. About a second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. Here out front is Jonah Kosher. Kosher with 15 to shoot. Looking for Lundin. He'll get it over to the right to Lamas for a three, and it's no good. Rebound to Drew Riken. Drew up ahead to Rugby with four, three. Drew for a three. It's short. And another shot at the buzzer by Crawl is short. At the half, we got a good one. T area 20, Yankton 19 on the Fox Stop scoreboard. Time for halftime brought to you by Joe Dean's, the South Dakota tradition. North Broadway, Yankton, home of the $4 dinners to go every day. Chicken, catfish, walleye, and shrimp. Grab a calendar of the month for more $4 dinners to go. 
seafood buffet every Friday and Saturday night. Sunday breakfast buffet starting at 10.30 a.m. Call Jodine 665-9884 for your to-go order. We'll be back in two minutes here on Five Star Streaming from YouTube. R.C. Smith Insurance has been a part of the Yankton community since 1949. We have several commercial insurance carriers to assist with your business, liability, property, commercial auto, and workers' compensation insurance needs. We have a wide selection of carriers to help protect your home, auto, watercraft, motorcycle, or long-term care insurance needs. We take pride in providing you with quality service when you have a claim or need to make changes to your coverage. Their agency is flexible, or stop by and see them today. 204 West 4th Street in Yankton. I've got a math question for you. When you add tolerance, subtract prejudice, and multiply efforts to treat one another with respect, what do you get? Less division. And school sports have it down to a science. Looking for an example of what can happen when we realize there's more that unites us than divides us? Look no further than high school sports in South Dakota. This message presented by the South Dakota High School Activities Association and the South Dakota Interscholastic Athletic Administrators Association. Don't let the name fool you. Rexall Drug isn't just a drugstore. I mean, yes, it is a drugstore that can help with your pharmacy needs, but it also has more. Hallmark gift cards and many more gifts to select from throughout the store, including a kids section. But my favorite is the selection of chocolates at the front is not just a drugstore, it's Yankton Rexall. Safer Plumbing, honest, fair, and friendly. When it comes to plumbing, you often don't think much about it until something goes horribly wrong. The name to remember is Safer Plumbing. Or maybe you're looking to upgrade. A remodel is something that would make your bathroom or kitchen more enjoyable. The name to remember is Safer Plumbing. And here's something you may not know. Safer Plumbing installs lawn irrigation systems. You know what I'm going to say next, right? The name to remember is Safer Plumbing. Safer Plumbing, honest, fair, and friendly. All right, back at the Yankton High School Summit Activity Center gym, the YHS dance team is performing here at the half. And, Michael, it's T-Area 20, Yankton 19, like we said, kind of like an ESD boys basketball game here at the half. <laughs> it is. Actually, kind of with the physicality, it's almost like an ESD football game out there. But, uh, you know, the Bucks just, they got a little hotter. But uh, they, they still had a lot of open shots not falling for them. Uh, I think their defense has been great. Their defense is helping keep them in this. In this uh, lots of steals and fast break points. Uh, but, yeah, so they have to feel pretty good only down one. Uh, I think they've contained uh, Kale Lundin really well. I think seven points if I look real quick. Uh, and so... And, and that's a lot to rugby. But even when rugby wasn't in there, uh, they kept him in check. And I think Jaden crawl has been doing a nice job. And, of course, Drew Riken from the outside has been doing a great job. If we can get Dylan Prouty and Cody Oswald going, though, I think that will make a big difference in the second half. This is the Joe Dean's Halftime Show brought to you by Joe Dean's, the South Dakota tradition. We'll have the scoring summary. Then Yankton girls coach Trey Creer will be heading up here soon to visit with us about the Gazelle's Lady Titans game won by T-Area 57-45. to But in the first half for T-Area, all five starters score, none off the bench. Kale Lundeen with seven points at the half. Jonah Kosher with five. Reese Kirschman with four. Alex Pease with two. And Jeff Worth with two. Clayton Sadler, Cole Schilling, and Sam Almas all played for T-Area but didn't score. T-Area, eight field goals. Two of those three-pointers, one by Jonah Kosher and one by Kale Lundeen. And T-Area, two out of two from the free-throw line. For Yankton in the first half, three out of their five starters score, two off the bench. Mac Riken has seven points at the half. Jaden Crawl with six. Rugby Riken with two among the starters. Drew Riken with a three off the bench. Michael Morris with a free-throw. Colton Potts and Dylan Prouty started for Yankton, didn't score. Cody Oswald played, 
and didn't score. The Bucks with seven field goals, two of those three-pointers, one by Mack Riken, one by Drew Riken. The Bucks three out of five from the free throw line at the half. Now joining us on the Joe Dean's Halftime Show, Yankton girls basketball coach Trey Creer. TK, T area was all that was uh, advertised uh, with uh, Katie Vasica. And boy, 28 to 11 at the half, your gals came out and exploded on the Lady Titans in that third quarter. Yeah, you know, we had 11 points in the first half. The first 16 minutes of the game, we scored 11 points in the first three minutes of the third quarter. So yeah. amazing how much difference making a couple shots can, can make you look. And, and even just, just the energy level that it can affect your kids with. Our kids came out the second half. Uh, with with a different look in their eye, we made the first one. I think Claire maybe knocked down the first look, and and we didn't look back from there. And we, we tried to make a game of it. We gave ourselves an opportunity there in the third quarter. Unfortunately, like you said, uh, I can't even say her last name. But Seca is uh, is as advertised. You know, that's about the quietest twenty two points you're going to see out of a kid. Yeah. yeah. And uh, definitely had an impact on the game. She found ways to get her teammates open. Uh, we took her away. I thought we did a good job of of really limiting her attack on the, on the dribble. Molly Savvy did a great job. Ellie Fieser did a great job on her. I thought Macy Drotsman did a great job on her as well. You know, we got in foul trouble there in the first half with uh, with uh, Fieser and, and Savvy and had to throw somebody else at her to see what happened, and we found out that Macy can guard a guard a little bit as well. So, you know, proud of our kids, proud of the fight that we put out, uh, the effort that we gave on senior night. We had some kids step up. You know, it's great to see Molly su- shooting the ball for us. We yeah. need to, That's been a consistent thing here now in the last three games, and as we start to get Ellie back, Karlovitz back on uh, Monday and Tuesday, you know, having Molly and another scoring option is just going to be that much more beneficial for us. That's right, and Ellie uh, did was on the floor as a senior for, well, a couple seconds, and then she went out. But, like we said, uh, it's not going to be just rush her into things. Uh, you know, with three games coming up uh, next week, it'll be a gradual process. Yeah, and, and she was able to practice with us uh, yesterday with th- some non-contact stuff. Got a lot of shots up. Man, she was like a kid in a candy store. <laughs> Just being able to be out there and have her practice jersey on and being around her teammates again. So we're hoping to be able to get a couple good practices with her, some live looks, and then the goal is to hopefully have her on the floor and ready to compete on Tuesday. All right, that's uh, Brookings coming up next Tuesday. TK, thanks for the visit. Talk to you Saturday morning on Breakfast with the Coaches. You bet. Thanks, Joe. All right. Trey Creer, Yankton girls basketball coach on the Jodine's Halftime Show. We're at the half in boys' action. T-Area 20 and Yankton 19. Let's go to the Fox Stop scoreboard, brought to you by the Fox Stop, located on the corner of West City Limits Road and 31st Street, open 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. daily. A full-service convenience store with gas, diesel, food, munchies, the beverages, the cellar, and the video lottery room. Let's check double-A boys basketball on this Thursday night. Again, T-Area leads Yankton 20-19 at the half. Harrisburg beats Sioux Falls Christian 70-64. Pier over Brookings 71-45. Halftime, Brandon Valley leads Spearfish 43-29. Sturgis and Red Cloud no score. In girls double-A action... Again, T area defeated Yankton 57 to 45. Brandon Valley over Spearfish 45-35. Sioux Falls Lincoln defeated Sioux Falls Roosevelt 45-33. Red Cloud over Sturgis 65-25 with two minutes to go in that game. In sub varsity action, in girls sub varsity action, T area defeated the Yankton uh, JVs 36-33 on a late three. Macy Drotsman had 14 points and nine rebounds. And in the freshman game, T area defeated Yankton 40 to eight. In the JV boys game, Yankton 64, T area 59, four in double figures, led by Drew Riken with 17 points. We're trying to dig out a sophomore boy score for you. Hopefully, we'll have that before the end of the game. And that's halftime. Brought to you by Joe Dean's, the South Dakota tradition, North Broadway, Yankton, home of the $4 dinners to go every day. Chicken, catfish, walleye, and shrimp. Grab a calendar of the month for more $4 dinners to go. Seafood buffet every Friday and Saturday night. Sunday breakfast buffet starting at 10.30 a.m. Call Joe Dean's 665-9884 for your to-go order. And, folks, we forgot to give you the Horizon Healthcare Report for, well, 
both these games. Of course, you saw Ellie Karlovitz in a ceremonial role as a starter in the Gazelles game. All the Bucks are healthy and ready to go for senior night as well. And I think I forgot one more thing, Michael. What's hot and what's not? Brought to you by Larry's Heating, including Yankton and Vermillion. Hold that thought. Okay. As T area starts with the ball in the third quarter. Moving right to left here in the second half. Yankton man-to-man. Here's Alex Pease to Kale Lundeen. Left side to Kosher. Kosher to Worth to Pease. Down low to Kershman. Posted up on Colton Potts. And a short shot in the lane by Lundeen is good. He has nine. Here come the Bucks moving left to right here in the second half. T area, man to man. Mac Riken hands it off to Rugby. Back to Mac on the right. Down low to Rugby. Rugby tried to curl it over to Dylan Prouty in the left corner. Ball knocked off the floor. For T area, Alex Pease, Reese Kershman, Jonah Kosher, Kale Lundeen, and Jeff Worth. For Yankton, Jaden Crawl, Colton Potts, Mac Riken, Rugby Riken, and Dylan Prouty. Same way they started the game. Here out front, Prouty, left side to Mack, to Rugby. Rugby backs up, jumper over Kosher is good. Rugby Riken with four, 22-21 T area coming up on a minute gone in the third quarter on the Fox Stop scoreboard. Right side, driving in as Kosher, stopped in the lane to Pease, lost the ball, a scramble. Here comes Jaden Crawl on a three-on-two break. Right corner, Rugby Riken, wide open three, too strong. Rebound, tip to Rugby. Try to go down low to Potts. The ball intercepted by Kale Lundin. 22-21 T area, 6.40 left to go in the third. On the Fox stop scoreboard. Out front, Lundin. Left corner to Pease. Pease to Kosher. To Lundin, to Worth, who gets a screen from Lundin. Lundeen with it outside the arc on the right, trying to drive on Prouty, cut off by Potts to Kershman, goes to the basket, lost the ball, and Kershman picks it up and scores. Jaden Crawl had it, but Jaden on all fours let it leak through his legs. That's all I'll say, 24-21 in favor of T area, six minutes to go in the third quarter on the Fox Stop scoreboard. And here is Mack Riken going to the basket. Mack Riken now with nine, 24-23. 5.45 left to go, third quarter on the Fox Stop scoreboard. Left side, Lundin to Kosher, to Pease, to Worth, to Kershman. Kershman to Lundin. Lundin, an easy path to the basket. Gets fouled and a blocking foul on Dylan Prouty. His first, team's first this half. Lundeen with nine, two out of two from the line. Those were the only attempts for T area in the first half. And the first of two, good. He is the first player for either team in double figures with 10. 25-23 T area. 5.29 left in the third. Second of two, good. He's got 11. 26-23. Yankton, needless to say, has not shot well from the three. Two for T area and just two for Yankton in the first half. Here's Colton Potts, left side to Rugby Riken. Rugby directing traffic out front to Prouty, long three, can't get it. And the rebound tipped to Lundeen. That would have tied the game. Lundeen, here is Kosher to the middle. Back door to Lundeen in the lane, shot blocked by Potts. But taken by Kershman, who scores off the glass for two more and goes to the line to try to complete the three-point play. The foul is on Mack Riken, his third, team second. Cody Oswald back in for Colton Potts. 28-23. So Kershman from the line, 21 of 51, 41% makes it. No arch, <laughs> but like we say, folks, not uh, how it's done, that it is done. 29-23, T area is now open to six-point lead, 4.50 left to go in the third. 
for Yankton. Runner in the lane by Mac Riken short. Tip by Crawl. Right corner to Prouty. Prouty to Mac Riken. Mac driving down low to Cody Oswald and the bucket up for two. Cody Oswald with a bucket off the bench to stop the little run by T area. 29 to 25, 428 left to go third quarter. Kosher, baseline jumper too strong. Rebound to Dylan Prouty, who along with Colton Potts are Yankton starters that haven't scored. Rugby Riken gets free and scores. Rugby Riken with six. 29-27, T area coming up on the midway point of the third quarter. For T area, Kale Lundin to Pease. Pease driving, kicks it out to Kosher. Kosher in the lane. Ball was kicked, and Kosher will get a bucket out of it on a deflection. 31-27, T area with three coming in at the next dead ball with 3.45 to play, 31-27. Here's Mack Riken, stopped left side of the lane to Crawl. Crawl backing down on Pease, leans in, and is called for an offensive foul. <laughs> Crawl with his first, team's third, as Sadler, Schilling, and almost back in. Dylan Prouty is out. Drew Riken back in. Drew, a big game off the bench for Yankton in the win over Rapid City Central on Saturday. Here is Lundeen to Almas, and he throws it away. He was looking for Sadler, and now Michael Moores will come in for Mac Riken, who has nine points to lead Yankton and three fouls. Kale Lundeen leads with 11. Rees Kershman has nine, including five this quarter. 31-27 T area, 316 left in the third on the Fox Stop scoreboard. Crawl to Mac Riken, or to Drew, I'm sorry. Here in the right corner is Michael Moores to Jaden Crawl. Crawl at the free throw line gives to Oswald. Oswald spin move, goes to the rack, layup no good. Rebound to Michael Moores, he'll score. Michael Moores with his first field goal has three off the bench. 31-29 T area, 250 left in the third. And Cody Oswald fouls Cole Schilling trying for a steal. Cody with his second, team's fourth. Bucks now have one more team foul than in all of the first half where they had three. T area had four. T area doesn't have any so far this quarter. Here's Lundeen. Lundeen driving. It will go to Sadler for a three. No, Schilling for a three, and it's good. And Schilling doing a little tongue waggling. That's his seventh of the season. 34-29. T area, 226 left in the third. Well, answer it. Here's Jaden Crawl driving to the basket. Scores, but a foul ahead of that on T area on the floor. Schilling with his first personal, first team foul. And on the end line, Rugby Riken will throw it in for Yankton. Bucks down five, 34 29, 221 left in the third on the Fox Stop scoreboard. Rugby will get it in to Drew, right side. Out front to crawl to Rugby. Rugby, jumper in the lane. Put too much spin on it as Rugby almost got a steal, but Lundeen comes up with it. Now to Worth. Worth gets it across the timeline in time to Lundeen. Lundeen, pull-up jumper from the free throw line. It's good. Can't let a guy like that get open. He's got 13. 36-29. Yankton will take a full timeout with 153 left in the third. Down seven at 36-29. A 60-second Culligan water break. Culligan water of Yankton. Think outside the bottle. Ready to make your mouth water? Just look at the screen. That's Bro Burger Bar, 304 West 3rd Street, Yankton. 
why choose FloorTech Restoration? They provide many services for residential and commercial properties like carpet cleaning, mold testing and removal, fire and smoke damage, water damage and duct cleaning. Locally owned and operated since 1994, FloorTech Restoration also offers 24-hour emergency service in Yankton, Mitchell, Southeast South Dakota, Northeast Nebraska, and Norfolk. When the floor is wet, call FloorTech. T area with 16 points this third quarter. The Yankton Bucks with 10. 153 left in the third. Yankton takes their second time out. They've got two poles and a 30. T area with a 30 and three poles. Yankton basketball with Rugby Riken handing it off to Drew Riken to Rugby. Down low to Crawl, posted up on Kershaman. Crawl will drive in the lane, leans in, shot blocked, but a foul on Kershaman. That's his first, team second. Jaden Crawl with six points going to the line. Only the fourth time Yankton has gone to the line tonight. Crawl, a 63% free throw shooter on the season. First of two, in and out, no good. Bucks are now three out of six from the line. They were three out of five in the first half. 36-29 T area, the second by Crawl, good. Jaden with his first point in the second half has seven. 36-30 T area, 135 left to go third quarter. Lundeen across the timeline to Worth to Almas. Almas to Schilling to almost driving the baseline, down low to Kershaman. Here's a kick out three, that's good by Jeff Worth. Jeff Worth with his team leading 49-3 of the season. Nine point lead for T area, their biggest of the game with 107 left to go third quarter. Bucks need to answer. Here's Drew Riken to Michael Moores in the lane to Cody Oswald, gets Kershaman off the air, off the glass for Cody, it's good. Four points this quarter, 39-32, T area, 50 seconds left in the third. Kershaman, Kershaman driving. Left corner, almost for a three, it's no good. Rebound, Drew Riken. Bucks have a four on five as Schilling gets up late. Here in the corner, Cody Oswald. Cody will kick it out to Rugby on the left. With 30 to play, 23 to shoot. Rugby to the rack, layup no good. Back to the floor, no call, and a foul on Michael Moores. <laughs> and now Chris Haynes going, where was the foul when Rugby Riken hit the floor? Michael Moores will commit his first, team's fifth. 24.4 left in the quarter. T area, now with the shot clock off, can go for one. They're up by seven. So here's Jeff Worth. Near the near sideline, near midcourt. Gets it to Jonah Kosher. Now with 10, 9, Kosher to Lundeen. Left corner, worth for a 3. It's no good. Rebound to Oswald. Here is Rugby Riken. Long jumper. And it hit the rim, and it's no good. T area 39. Yankton 32 heading into the fourth quarter on the Fox Stop scoreboard. A 60-second Culligan water break on five-star streaming. Seasons Power Sports in Yankton can help make your life easier and more fun. All Seasons Power Sports can help you with ATVs, side-by-sides, fishing and pleasure boats, as well as motorcycles, watercraft, and more. Check out their inventory at allseasonspowersportsinc.com. All Seasons Power Sports, your authorized Honda and Yamaha dealer, on your way to the lake in Yankton. Fuller Digital Solutions started small, but now we're growing as FDS provides live streaming coverage for over 20 schools across three different states on our Fuller Digital Solutions YouTube channel. Subscribe to get notified when we go live for your school events. Big events are captured live, and your business can get noticed with advertising during our live streams. Local talent and camera operators are encouraged to contact us, too. For future employment, no experience necessary, we will train. For information about advertising or working with Fuller Digital Solutions, email us and follow us on Facebook. T area with 19 points in the third quarter to the Yankton Bucks, 13. 39-32 T area, who has had as much as a nine-point lead late in the third quarter. On the floor for Yankton, Rugby Riken, Jaden Crawl, 
Cody Oswald, Dylan Prouty, and Michael Moores. For T area, Kosher, Schilling, Pease, Lundeen, and Worth. Yankton will get the ball to start the fourth and final quarter. Rugby Riken with it out front. To the right side to Crawl. Crawl hands it off to Prouty. Bucks have not shot well from three tonight. They've had some good looks. Crawl inside. A little runner won't fall. Gets his own rebound. No, Cody Oswald has it. Scores and was fouled. And will go to the line to try to complete the three-point play. Clayton Sadler with his second. Team's third. Cody Oswald from the line coming in. A 75% free throw shooter. Dylan Prouty out. Mack Riken back in. The free throw by Cody. Good. 39-35 T area. 7.39 to go on the Fox Stop scoreboard. In the front court, Kosher goes to Worth. Worth with a screen from Sadler to Pease to Lundeen. Lundeen driving. Baseline jumper. Short. Rebound tip gathered in by Rugby Riken. Rugby into the front court. No look down low to Moore's jump hook short. Rebound Lundeen. That would have brought the Bucks to within two. Back the other way. Here is Worth on the right outside the arc. Now backs up. He's got crawl on him. A pull up three. No good. Rebound Mac Riken. Rebound foul on Jonah Kosher. His first. Team's fourth. Yankton with five team fouls. T area, four team fouls this half. Yankton down by four, 39-35. With a little 3 nothing run to start this quarter. Mack Riken to Rugby Riken. Down low to Crawl, and the lay-in good for two off the glass. Jaden Crawl with nine. Bucks to within two again on a 5 nothing run to start this quarter. 39-37 T area. Here's Lundeen to Pease, left side to Worth, to Pease, over to Kosher with a little runner no good, rebound to Crawl. Bucks can tie or take the lead on a three, which would make this place explode. Rugby Riken, right baseline, inside to Michael Morris, left it short again, but he gets the rebound and kicks it out to Oswald. Oswald, down low to Morris, hands it off to Mac Riken. Mac to Michael, to Rugby, to Jaden Crow for a three in the lead, and it's no good. Rebound, Clayton Sadler. The Bucks continue cold from three. And a timeout wanted by T area, a full 60-second Culligan water break. We'll be back in one minute on Five Star Streaming from YouTube. At Avera, we believe good health starts early and that good health care can inspire a life of wellness. At Avera, we believe in push-ups and pumping iron. We believe less is more. And live for apple slices instead of apple pie. At Avera, we live for staying healthy and enjoying the little things. We're invested in healthy living so you can live longer. Hear that? That's the sound of a well-oiled team hard at work working on your ride at MW Towing and Automotive. They offer complete automotive and tire services. Plus, towing is in their name. MW Towing and Automotive offers 24-hour towing and roadside assistance. Call to schedule your appointment today at 605-668-9177. MW Towing, located two and a half miles north of Walmart on Highway 81. 39-37, 39-37, T area, 5.57 to go. Each team with three timeouts left. T area, a couple fouls away from the one and one. Yankton is three fouls away from the one and one. And T area with the ball out front. Jonah Kosher to Jeff Worth. Back out front to Kosher to Kale Lundeen. Down low to Kershman. Kershman down low to Pease and the layup in. Pease with his first bucket since the first quarter has four. 41-37 T area, 5.36 to go. Boy, if just some threes can fall for Yankton. Here is Crawl right side of the lane. Goes in and scores off the glass. He is the first buck in double figures with 11. 
41-39 T area, 5.19 to go on the Fox Stop scoreboard. Jonah Kosher to Pease, to Kale Lundeen, back to Pease, to Lundeen, now to Kosher, down low to Rees Kershman, driving on Cody Oswald, left corner, Pease for a three, and it's no good. Rebound saved by Rugby Riken. Again, the Bucks with a chance to tie or take the lead on a three. Rugby Riken down low, fouled by Kosher. His second, team's fifth. Rugby Riken, six points at the line to try to tie it up, shooting two with 4.52 left to go in the game. Rugby, a 66% free throw shooter coming in. First of two, no good. Dylan Prouty in, Michael Moores, who has three off the bench, comes out. Schilling is back in for T area for Alex Pease, who has four points. So the best that rugby can do is bring the Bucks to within one. The free throw is no good. And Lundeen saves the rebound from going out of bounds to Jonah Kosher. Kosher to Schilling. Schilling to Lundeen being bothered by Rugby Reich. And here's a pull-up jumper. Air ball out of bounds to Yankton with 4.33 to go. Kale Lundeen will hear about it. Pease back in and Schilling out for T area. 41 39 T area, 4.33 to go on the Fox Stop scoreboard. Across the timeline, it's Mac Riken. Mac stopped on the left, down low to Crawl. Crawl posted up on Pease. Crawl in the lane, right side to Prouty. Here, left side, Cody Oswald driving in. Cody, jumper in the lane, gets a nice roll. Cody Oswald, nine points in the second half. We're tied at 41 with 4.07 to go. Crowd trying to get into it. The students are into it. Here out front is Pease to Worth to Kirschman right baseline. Under four to go, tied at 41. Bucks haven't had the lead since 7-5 to in the first quarter. Here's Lundeen. A three by Pease, and it's good. Alex Pease, five points in the quarter. Pease with only his second three of the season. Are you kidding me? Crawl is fouled by Pease driving in. His second, team sixth, 44-41 T area. And Drew Weber is all over Jocko Johnston. Rugby Riken will throw it in. He goes into Prouty. And an errant pass... Intended for Crawl gets knocked away, taken by T area. Lundeen moving in, runner in the lane, no good. Rebound to Mac Riken. Bucks down three, 321 to go. Mac to the rack, the runner, no good. Foul on Pease, who's complaining about the call. Pease with his third, team seventh. Bucks are in the bonus. Mac Riken, two out of three from the line with nine points. Shooting two. First of two is good. Mack is the second buck in double figures with 10. 44, 42. T area, 317 left. The second by Mack. Too strong. Rebound tapped out by Crawl to Prouty. Here's Cody Oswald on the left. It tries to go to Mack Reich and knocked off the floor in front of the Yankton bench by Jonah Kosher of T area. 3-11 3-11 to go, 44-42 T area on the Fox Stop scoreboard. Rugby Riken in front of the Yankton bench will throw it in. Gets it in to Cody Oswald. And now we'll give it to Rugby. Oh, a three for the lead would be super good. Down low it goes to Crawl. Crawl driving in and can't finish but was fouled and will shoot two with 2.54 to go. Reese Kershman with his second, team's eighth. Jaden Crawl, one out of two from the line with 11 points. Bucks this quarter are one, two out of three, four, five. First of two is good. Jaden with 12, he can tie it with a second one. Michael Moore's at the table, in for Dylan Prouty. He and Colton Potts are the only Yankton starters that haven't scored yet. 
Crawl with 12, looking for the tie. It's good. 44 all, 2.59 to go. In the backcourt, Kale Lundeen. In the front court to Jonah Kosher on the near sideline. Will drive in from the left, stopped, goes to Lundeen, to Worth, to almost a pull up three. Good! And timeout wanted by T area. Sam Almas, a 6 2 sophomore, with his 13th three of the season to give T area a three point lead, 47 44. Second 30 second Culligan water break taken by T area. Culligan water of Yankton, think outside the bottle at 401 East 4th Street in Yankton. Well, Michael, I can tell you what's hot and what's not. What's not is Yankton's three point shooting. What's hot? Well, <laughs> Yankton hanging in there against a good T area team with Kale Lundeen. Yeah, um, the Bucks really are. And just a few things here and there. You know, a couple of free throws in there, they would have had the lead. Uh, so just keep playing their game, taking it down low. They're not defending well against Yankton, getting some fouls on them. So I think just keep doing that for now. 47 44 T area. 2.40 to go. Each team with two fulls and a 30 for timeouts. Yankton is in the one and one. T area a couple fouls away. The Bucks with the ball and it's getting noisy. Here's Mac Riken. It goes to Crawl. Crawl will hand it off to Dylan Prouty. A three for the tie. They're looking for it. Here's Mac Riken. And it goes into Cody Oswald after a deflection. He'll score off the glass for two more. He's got 11 off the bench all in the second half. 47 46. T area. 2 10 left to go for T area. Pease on the left. Out front to Kershaman on the high post. Here's Lundeen to Kershaman to Pease to Kosher. Left side. Here is Worth. Here's a long three that's too strong by Kosher in the rebound to Cody Oswald. Yankton, Michael, looking for their first lead since 7-5 in the first quarter, and now a Yankton timeout. Oh, the wheels of strategy are turning. T area 47, Yankton 46, 143 to go on the Fox Stop scoreboard. A 30 second Culligan water break. Culligan water of Yankton, think outside the bottle at 401 East 4th Street. T area led 14 to 7 after one quarter. Kale Lundeen had a three pointer from midcourt. Bucks trail 20 to 19 at the half. Trailed 39 32 after three. Again, T area started the game on a 5 0 run. Yankton had a 7 0 run for their only lead at 7 to 5. So, Chris Haynes trying to come up with a good play on the floor for Yankton. Prouty, Rugby Riken, Crawl, Cody Oswald, and Mac Riken to take it in on the far sideline in front of the Yankton bench. I would like to see this Yankton crowd get into it a little more. Well, no kidding. The students are, I know that. Inbounds pass goes to Crawl. Right side to Rugby. Rugby on the drive. Here's a three from the corner by Prouty for the lead. It hits the side of the backboard. Ball is loose. Taken by Lundeen. At the other end, the layup is good. Kale Lundeen with 15, 46, 49, or 49, 46 T area, 122 to go, and a foul on T area, resulting in a one and one for Yankton. Jeff Worth with his second, team's ninth. Michael Moore's in, Dylan Prouty out, offense, defense, substitution. Mac Riken is three out of five from the line. Mac we need them with 120 to go. The Bucks down a possession, 49-46. Front end, good. Mack now with 11. 49 to 46. T area, 120 to go. The back end, no good. Rebound. Knocked around, it goes to Crawl. Yankton can tie it or take the lead on a three with 113 to go. Here's Rugby Riken. Rugby to Mack to Cody Oswald. Cody goes to Rugby. 
Rugby driving at the black, and the layup no good. Rebound, Kale Lundin with 58 seconds to go, fouled by Rugby Riken. That's one quarterback fouling another. <laughs> Rugby with his first, team sixth. Some backcourt pressure by Yankton with T area leading 49 47. 57 seconds to play. It goes in to Jonah Kosher. Kosher to Lundin. Back to Kosher. Across the timeline to Lundin. Lundin down low to Kershman. Blocked from behind, but a foul is called on Michael Moores. Jaden Crow had the block, but Michael Moores will get the foul. Michael with his second, team seventh, Reese Kershman. With nine points, one out of one from the line. First of two is short. 45.7 to play on the Fox Stop scoreboard. Timeout wanted by Yankton. A full timeout will be back in 60 seconds on five-star streaming from YouTube. 75 years servicing Northeast Nebraska, Elkhorn Valley Bank and Trust has crossed the river and is excited to announce the opening of a new Yankton branch. I'm Glenn Peterson, Market President. While Elkhorn Valley Bank might be due to Yankton, our staff has years of banking experience in the Yankton area. Our focus is on our customers and the communities in which they live. We look forward to serving you and giving back to Yankton and the surrounding communities. We invite you to come see that at Elkhorn Valley Bank, there really is a difference. Member FDIC. It's time for Question of the Night. What local owned and operated convenience store in Yankton has the best cheese from Dimmick, South Dakota, a freezer to go with the cheese filled with all the meats, and gives five cents off when you pay cash. That's right, it's Triple Time Rudy, located right next to Subway. Cheeses, meats, gas, drinks, and more. It's time for Triple Time Rudy. 49-47, T area, 45.7 left in the game on the Fox Stop scoreboard. Rees Kershman, who missed the first of two, has a second one coming. The best he can do is give T area a one possession lead. Students make a noise. Kershman's free throw is no good. Yankton can tie or take the lead on a three with 40 seconds to play. The Bucks. here is Mac Riken losing the ball. Oh, a foul called on T area. Jeff Worth shaking his head at Jocko Johnston, his third personal, 10th team foul. Double bonus for Mac Riken with 36.3 to play. First of two, good. Mack now with 12, 49-48 T area, 36.3 left to go. A 1.3 second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. Match mixes the second, and the rebound to T area. A foul by Crawl on Jonah Kosher. Crawl with his second, team's eighth. Kosher, seven points, is one out of six from the free throw line for 16%. And this is with 33.9 left to go. The shot clock is off. T area 49, Yankton 48. Front end is good. Doesn't it always happen that way? It seems Kosher to. will earn the bonus with his eighth point to make it 50 to 48 with 33.9 to play. Second one gets a nice roll. And timeout T area. They will take a full. We'll take a 60 second Culligan water break on five star streaming from YouTube. Tom Stoltz, on behalf of all the doctors and staff at our first chiropractic centers. In 1982, I started the practice. In 1993, Drs. Jim and Sheila Fitzgerald joined. In 2005, Dr. T.J. Stoltz joined us. And since then, Dr. Matt and Mackenzie Erlinson and Dr. J. Fitzgerald have joined our practices. First Chiropractic Centers, whole health with hands-on healing, with offices in Yankton, Scotland, Hardington, Wagner, and Tyndall. 
Hey, this is Jack out of Joe Dean's, and you need to pick up your new calendar. We've actually added some new items to our $4 dinners to go. Check it out. Don't forget, we'll do the cooking for you. 2809 Broadway, Joe Dean's, Yankton. This is Jack out of Joe Dean's, and we have the buffet open, and that is every day of the week. Monday through Saturday, it starts at 11. Sunday, it starts at 10.30. So come on out and partake in the regular buffet. 2809 Broadway, Yankton. 51 to 48, T area after Jonah Kosher, who was 16% from the free throw line, made both ends of a one and one. Yankton down a possession with 33.9 to play, 51-48 on the Fox Stop scoreboard. Each team with one timeout left. Rugby Riken will pick up the ball, bring it into the front court against Almas. Rugby driving, the runner off the glass, good! And a timeout Yankton with 26.4 to go. Rugby Riken makes a T area 51 and Yankton 50. Yankton now out of timeouts. We better keep it here. Oh, yeah. Yep. Shot clock is off. 26.9 to play. T area in the one and one. Yankton in the double bonus. Change of possession arrow favors T area. In the girls' game, T area held off a furious third quarter rally by Yankton to win 57 to 45. T area now 11 and 8, led by Katie Vasika with 22 points. 12 by Cassidy Gores and 11 by Bryn Schuppner. T area at Elk Point Jefferson tomorrow night to wrap up the regular season. The Gazelles were led by Claire Tereshinsky with 21, Molly Savvy with 10. The Gazelles 5 and 12 have their last ESD matchup next Tuesday night here at home against Brookings. That game Tuesday night at 7 will be seen and heard on Classic Hits 1063, kbhtradio.com and on five-star streaming from YouTube. On the floor for Yankton, Rugby Riken, Mac Riken, Michael Moores, Cody Oswald, Jaden Kroll. It's Kosher, Almas, Kershaman, along with Lundeen and Worth. Inbounds pass to Lundeen. Lundeen driving up court, double teamed. And a timeout wanted by T area as they were getting close to a 10 second call. T area will take its final timeout. Yep, neither team with a timeout left. T area 51, Yankton 50 in the sub varsity games for the Gazelles. T area won the JV game 36-33 with a late three-pointer. Macy Drotsman had 14 points and nine rebounds for the Yankton girls JVs. In the freshman game, T area defeated Yankton 40-8. In the boys JV game, Yankton 64, T area 59. Four in double figures for the JVs. Drew Riken had 17 points, but still can't find a sophomore score. That will probably be the only... Uh, question of the night (laughs) (sighs) all right 20 seconds to go shot clock off t area 51 yankton 50 again yankton in the double bonus t area a couple fouls away from the double bonus with eight fouls on yankton on the far sideline lundeen will throw it in no alex pease will throw it in He's got five points this quarter, including a three. Pease will get it in to Kosher. Kosher double teamed and a foul with 17.8 to play on Rugby Riken. His second, team's ninth. So here we go with Jonah Kosher again. Dylan Prouty in for Michael Moores. Now Kosher, front end of a one and one coming up with 17.8 to play. Again, He made two coming in, one out of six from the line for 16%. Front end, no good! Yankton can win it! 15, 14, Rugby Riken in the front court. Rugby to the left, Rugby doubled up on the end line, steps out of bounds with 6.6 to play. 
It'll be T area basketball. So Pease will run the end. No, he won't run the end line. He'll get it into Almas. A foul with 6.3 to play on Cody Oswald. Cody with his third. Team's 10th. Sam Almas with a three this quarter. Is three of five from the line for 60%. With 6.3 left. The best he can do is give T area a three-point lead. area first of two is good Sam almost with four points this quarter Drew Reichen in Cody Oswald out both teams without a timeout and now T area has cleared the lane leaving almost with the second of two in the double bonus Second one, good, 53 to 50. Yankton needs a three to tie. Kershman back in. Also in is Clayton Sadler. Mack Riken to throw it in. And now T area with some backcourt pressure. Why are we playing music? Mack Reichen into rugby. Rugby is fouled by Cale Lundeen. And that's not a bad foul. Lundeen with his second. Double bonus for Rugby Reichen. Who is 0 for 2 from the line this quarter. These coming with 5.4 left to go. And Yankton down 53 to 50. First of two for rugby. No good. Cody Oswald in for Drew Riken. 5.4 left in regulation on the Fox Stop scoreboard. T area 53, Yankton 50. Rugby Riken with a second of two will airmail it. And it goes out of bounds to T area with Pease and almost back in. Expect a Yankton foul immediately. Rugby Riken 0 for 4 from the line this quarter. Wow. Pease to throw it in. It goes in to Lundeen with 5.1 to go, and he can pretty much seal it away with one out of two in the double bonus from the free throw line with 5.1 to go. 53 to 50, T area with 5.1 to go. The Bucks had their chances. They definitely did. First of two is good. Lundeen with 16. Oswald out. Drew Riken back in. 54 to 50 with 5.1 to go. And Lundeen makes them both to make it 55 50. It goes into Mack Riken. Mack across the timeline. A pull up three. Off the glass, good at the buzzer, but too little, too late as T area hangs on to win over Yankton, 55 to 53 with the win. T area 12 and 6. Yankton falls to 9 and 8. T area will end a busy week with Elk Point Jefferson coming up tomorrow night in Elk Point. Yankton will be at Brookings in ESD action next Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. Yankton High School Basketball is presented by FNBO with full-service banking, mortgage, ag, commercial, small business, free checking, savings, and credit cards, your great big small bank, FNBO. The First Dakota National Bank Buck Basketball postgame show is coming up. First Dakota National Bank, proud of our accomplishments in the communities we serve. We'll be back in three minutes on Five Star Streaming from YouTube.
Most new systems today, it's important to remember to maintain the warranty. You need to show proof of service. Things that you can expect from Larry's Heating and Cooling Comfort Care Club are prompt, timely service, two maintenances, and respect. If you ever have an issue, from Lennox to Carrier and everything in between, we're there for you. For any inquiries about our pricing, feel free to call us at 1-800-491-9461. Anytime, any day. Insurance can be complicated, but it doesn't have to be when you insure with Midwest Insurance Agency located at 3016 Piper Street. Through three generations, Midwest Insurance Agency has numerous awards and has spent many hours serving the community. Travis and Whitney Devine carry on that family legacy. Whether it's the family farm or a vehicle, make sure it's protected. Midwest Insurance at the corner of Piper Street and 31st. Stop or call for your quote today. New year, new flooring. I plan on saying hello with new flooring from Larson Carpet in Yankton. Larson Carpet will help with design and installation. They have a great selection of carpet, vinyl, luxury vinyl plank, hardwood, and tile. Stop in and let them help you get a new look in the new year. Larson Carpet at 208 Walnut Street in the Meridian District in Yankton. For the best flooring for your space, lifestyle, and budget, see Larson Carpet. From simple sniffles to complex health conditions, the primary care providers at Yankton Medical Clinic will not only see you for your annual visits, screenings, and preventative care, but also provides care for the entire family, from pediatrics to adults. With four clinic locations and 15 outreach locations throughout South Dakota and Nebraska, compassionate, quality medical care is closer than you think. For more information on providers, services, and locations, visit our website, yanktonmedicalclinic.com. Back at the Yankton High School Summit Activities Center gym, along with Michael Schumacher, our Yankton Sportscaster Club members, who bring you Yankton Bucks and Gazelles Athletics on Five Star Communications and tonight on Five Star Streaming from YouTube because of South Dakota men's and women's basketball on the stations of Five Star Communications. Well, a doubleheader sweep for the T area girls and the T area boys. The last appearance for the Bucks at home this season and the second to the last appearance for the Gazelles here at home. The Gazelles will have a home game with Brookings next Tuesday. The Bucks will be at Brookings on Tuesday. And T-Area will be both at Elk Point Jefferson, girls and boys, in a doubleheader coming up on Friday night. Again, the final T-Area 55 and Yankton 53, again in the girls' game, which we'll go over soon. T-Area 57, and Yankton 45. In this game, T-Area got out to a 5 nothing lead. By the way, the post game brought to you by First Dakota National Bank. Proud of our accomplishments in the communities we serve. T-Area got out to a 5 nothing lead. Yankton went on a 7 nothing run to lead 7-5, to five, which folks would be their only lead of the game. T-Area then went on a 9 nothing run, including a Kale Lundin 3 from half court, and after one, T-Area 47 and Yankton 7. At the half, T-Area led 20-19, to 19, so T-Area with only 6 points in the second quarter, while Yankton scored 12 Again, a one-point lead for T-Area at the half. After three, T-Area led 39 to 32. And then at the end, well, you can kind of tell how the game went, Michael, by the free throw sequence for both T-Area and Yankton. T-Area's Reese Kershaman missed two with 45.7 to go. Jonah Kosher who was only one out of six from the line coming in, made two both ends of a one-and-one one with 33.9 to go. Kosher then would miss uh, front end with 17.8 left to play. And Kale Lundin, no, before that, Sam almost made two with 6.3 left in regulation. And then Kale Lundin made two with 5.1 left in the game. Mac Riken had a banked-in three at the buzzer, but the Bucks fall by two. So the Bucks free throws in the fourth quarter, well, 
Mac Riken went one out of two with 36.3 to play. Rugby Riken missed two with 5.4 remaining. The Bucks, Michael, in the fourth quarter from the free throw line, one, two, three, four, five, six out of seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. And they were seven of fifteen in the second half and ten of twenty for the game. T area, nine of twelve from the free throw line in the second half. They were eleven of fourteen for the game. They essentially won the game uh, from the uh, free throw line here tonight. And <laughs> Uh, the T area guys uh, doing a little celebrating on Yankton's home court. Um, <laughs> and I see athletic director uh, Ryan Moore standing by. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, I guess that's I guess that's their right, but maybe the wrong place to do it. All right. For T area, here's the scoring summary. All five starters score, two off the bench. One in double figures. Kale Lundeen averaging 20 points. Coming in, had 17 tonight. Reese Kershman with nine. Jonah Kosher with nine. Seven for Alex Pease and five for Jeff Worth. But T area got five points off the bench by Sam Almas all in the fourth quarter and a Cole Schilling three in the third quarter. For Yankton, Three out of five starters score, three off the bench, three in double figures, led by Mac Riken with 15, Jaden Crawl with 13, and Cody Oswald with 11. Among the starters, Dylan Prouty didn't score and started. Colton Potts started as a senior but didn't score. Off the bench, Drew Riken with three, Michael Moores with three. T area with 19 field goals, six of those were three pointers, three more than the Bucks, One for Alex Pease, one for Jonah Kosher, one for Kale Lundeen, a half-court buzzer beater at the end of the first quarter, and Jeff Worth had a three, Cole Schilling with a three, Sam Almas with a three. Again, T area, two out of two from the free throw line in the first half, nine of 12 in the second, 11 of 14 for the game. For Yankton, they had 20 field goals, only three of those three-pointers, two by Mack Riken and the other by Drew Riken. Bucks were three of five from the free throw line in the first half, seven of 15 in the second half, and 10 for 20 in the game. And T area wins by a deuce, 55 to 53, as we see Yankton coach Chris Haynes coming up. We'll be visiting with Coach Haynes in a moment on the Fox Stop scoreboard in the um, sub-varsity games. The Bucks jvs defeated T-Area 64-59, no score on the sophomore game. And in the Gazelle sub-varsity games, T-Area defeated Yankton in the JV game 36-33 with a late three. And in the freshman game, T-Area defeated Yankton by the final of 42-8. Now joining us on the Buck Basketball Post Game Show, brought to you by First Dakota National Bank. Proud of our accomplishments in the communities we serve. Yankton coach Chris Haynes and Coach Haynes, uh, that was a wild one uh, down the stretch. But, uh, you know, for T area, they got, uh, you know, the plays they needed, especially from the free throw line at the end. Yeah, I got to give them credit. You know, we had... We had our chances, no doubt. Um, couldn't really find our rhythm offensively all night, and you got to give T's defensive, uh, T's defense a lot of credit for that. But proud of the guys' effort. Just disappointed that we came up a little bit short. And there were looks all night uh, from three. Uh, you know, T area had six. Yankton uh, had three. But the guys had so many open looks and ones that, you know, at home you'd have a probably better chance of making than on the road. Yeah, and we banked in the one at the buzzer, so basically yeah. we made two yeah. um, all game. And obviously it's going to be tough for us, uh, you know, to win games making two threes, um, you know, against bigger, stronger, you know, more physical opponents. But that's no excuse, and our guys didn't use it as an excuse. We didn't shoot the ball well. Uh, there's no secret about that, but we still gave ourselves a chance to win the game. And uh, so you got to be proud of the guys' effort for that and, you know, that they – you know, they can understand that just because you're not shooting the ball well or having an off-shooting night, you still keep yourself in it and give yourself a chance to win, and the guys did that. Yep, Mac Riken with 15, Jaden Crawl with 13, Cody Oswald, big second half, 
uh, with 11. And, uh, well, T area, yeah, Kale Lundin is the real deal. There's no doubt about it. Three below is average for 17 points. But when you have guys like Reese Kershman inside, uh, Jonah Kosher on the outside, I mean, um, and then uh, Alex Pease, uh, you know, with seven, you know, they've got, uh, what, five scores anywhere from that five to nine point range to help Lundin out. Yeah, and the worst kid is averaging about 15. We did a good job on him, and yep. he missed some. Um, but the P's kid hurt us. Uh, I don't know if he's had, you know, um, eight, seven points is a lot for him. And, and, you know, give the kid credit. He hit a big shot there uh, in the fourth quarter and, and made a couple plays. Um, but, you know, things like that, they had kids step up and make plays like that. So you got to give them credit. Um, and, again, for us, you know, it was good atmosphere. Um, it was a playoff type game, yeah. And we knew yeah. that that was going to be that way. T coming off a loss, it was extremely important important game for them, seeding point wise. Obviously, it's important for us seeding point wise. It's middle of February, and that's how the game should be. Um, so yeah, it was a, it was a fun game, competitive. I thought both teams competed really hard. Yeah. Just um, you know, unfortunate that we weren't able to come out on top. All right, uh, coach. Now standing at uh, nine and eight, final ESD game of the regular season at Brookings on Tuesday night, and then the trip out west for Spearfish and Sturgis a week from uh, Friday and Saturday. So, well, like we said, a little uh, a little work and a uh, couple uh, practices, and uh, got to be ready to go uh, on Tuesday to uh, try to wrap up uh, the week uh, with hopefully three wins to. You know, like we said, get yourself in that position for the Sodak 16. Yeah, no doubt about it. You know, we played well here the last couple of weeks, and uh, we got another week of games uh, all on the road. So hopefully, we can get away and and uh, you know really come together and and uh, especially the overnight trip when you're going out there and um, you know get some confidence and camaraderie going on the road and uh, you know hopefully that builds some momentum into that Sodak 16 week of practice and then that final game. All right, Coach Haynes, thanks for the visit. We'll talk to you Saturday morning on Breakfast with the Coaches. Okay, thanks, Joe. All right, Chris Haynes on the Buck Basketball Post Game Show, brought to you by First Dakota National Bank. Proud of our accomplishments in the communities we serve. And uh, Michael, do we need to? Uh, we, we do we, not. We, we can wrap it up with the uh, Fox Stop scoreboard. We certainly can. Yes. All right. Sounds good. All right. Let's see. Okay. Double A boys action on the Fox Stop scoreboard. Brought to you by the Fox Stop, located on the corner of West City Limits Road and 31st Street. Open 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. daily, a full-service convenience store with gas, diesel, food, bunchies, beverages, the cellar, and the video lottery room. Double-A boys action tonight. Harrisburg beats Sioux Falls Christian 70-64. Pier over Brookings 71-45. Brandon Valley over Spearfish 77-50. And Sturgis led Red Cloud 30-22 at halftime. In girls double-A action, again, T area over Yankton, 57 to 45. Brandon Valley over Spearfish, 45-35. Sioux Falls Lincoln, no, I'm sorry, this is girls action now. Brandon Valley over Spearfish, 45-35. Sioux Falls Lincoln over Sioux Falls Roosevelt, 45-33. And Red Cloud over Sturgis, 67 to 25. Again, with the win, T area now 12 and six. They will be at Elk Point Jefferson with their girls tomorrow night to wrap up uh, the girls' season before the T-area girls go into uh, region action in Class A next Tuesday. Uh, T-area, I think, has EPJ tomorrow night and then Beersford on Monday. Uh, The Yankton Bucks will be at Brookings on Tuesday and then, as we mentioned, next Friday and Saturday, a week from Friday and Saturday, at Spearfish and at Sturgis. This has been the Buck Basketball Post Game Show brought to you by First Dakota National Bank. Proud of our accomplishments in the communities we serve. Yankton High School Basketball presented by First National Bank Omaha. FNBO with full service banking, mortgage, ag, commercial, small business, free checking, savings and credit cards. Your great big small bank, FNBO. For Michael Schumacher, I'm Joe Van Gore. And for our Yankton Sportscaster Club members, we bring you Bucks and Gazelles Athletics on Five Star Communications. You've been watching and listening to a presentation of Yankton High School Basketball on Five Star Streaming from YouTube. Good night from the Yankton High School Summit Activity Center gym.